Welcome everyone to the Phoenix Report. I am Jack Connor, and uh, today we are going to talk about the Batman, the the brand new movie that's out. Uh, as we record this, it is uh, it is Sunday, March thirteenth, two thousand twenty two. So the movie's been out for over a week now. So I figured uh, this is going to be a, a spoiler discussion. Um, since it's still in the theaters, I haven't gotten to see it multiple times. I've only seen it seen it once so far. So this isn't going to be like a deep dive where I go scene for scene with it. Um, you know, maybe maybe one of these days in the future we might. But uh, but for now, this is just you know our initial thoughts of it. And uh, with me as always, I have uh, the man who I really consider to be my Commissioner Gordon. I'm talking about John Walters. <laughs> Yo, what's nice, up, buddy? Man. Nice little lead in there. Good Thank night, you, Commissioner Gordon. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me, and uh, good to be back. It's good to do one of these again. It's been a little bit, a little while. Yeah, so uh, so the movie's been out for a little while, and going into it, you know, it had a lot of, lot of positive buzz going into it. Like, you know, yeah. I, we, you and I had talked about this. You know, um, <coughs> I'm, I'm trying to go back to when this was announced and the fact that they were going in the direction we were. It's... I wasn't oh, man, really that was a long time ago. <laughs> I wasn't really sure what to make of it because for the longest time and, and and you know going into the history of it this was this was supposed to be the spin-off from the DCEU where Ben Affleck was originally supposed to both star and direct it. Yeah, in fact the ban- Ben's actual solo film was going to be called The Batman. Yes. I don't know yeah. if he was writing it necessarily. I, I know he was set to. I, he was. I think he was writing. Well, you know what? Don't take that back. I know he was set to direct it. So. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so I had imagined you would have some writing, some parts of oh, writing. Yes. To, yes. I, 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 I'm. I'm looking at it here. Apparently, he had. Um, he was in negotiations to direct and co-write the screenplay with Jeff Johns. Oh, with Jeff John. So, so this, this, yeah, so this was uh, as far back as 2016 when he was already cast in Batman vs Superman. I think right. that was part of his negotiations. And excuse he, me, V Superman. Uh, just oh, of just course, Batman V Superman. <laughs> Thank you. So sorry, but I mean, yeah, I, I don't know what his contract was because he was in BVS, he was in Suicide Squad and Justice League, of course. Right. So yeah, so as far back as. Well, let me see. It was 2013 when he was when Ben was cast in officially in the DCEU. I remember talking to you about it back then. But uh, so in, in, was it was it really 2013? I thought that's when the Superman movie came out. It was, was in 2013. But I, I think later that year they had announced that what the sequel was going to be, that they were looking to set up their universe. And Is that right? In the same year. Is yeah. That right. I didn't realize it was. Uh, I didn't realize there it was in the same year. I knew there was moving fast track, fast track it, but yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. They. I mean, as soon as Man of Steel dropped, that was like right. You know, a year because be, a year before that was the first Avengers movie. Right. So Warner Brothers, they, they had this this brand new Superman property. They had just wrapped up the Dark Knight trilogy, but they were looking yeah, yeah, at it was, like, okay. That's what I was going to say. It was Avengers they, and the last of the Nolan. Yeah, Dark Knight uh, Rises came yeah. out in 2012. So like a year right. after that, you know, Nolan was already was already a, a, an executive producer on um, you know on Man of Steel. Right. So even even though that wasn't connected to the Dark Knight universe, they, I think Warner Brothers was taking a look at that and looking at what Marvel was doing and, and were like, hey, um, they're they're doing some stuff over here. We we better catch up to what Marvel's doing. Yeah. We 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 want a piece of the pie, basically. Yeah. 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 So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, which is like kind of like too little, too late, because it's like, dark the Dark Knight that came out the same year as the first Iron Man movie. Is that right? Which is 2008, which is wild to think about. Yeah. Like Marvel had already like beat them to the punch when it came to that. Right. They were already setting that up, but that 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 that's a whole a whole different discussion. But that's a whole cool. different discussion because you have Kevin Feige, who's like the ultimate brains of. Of oh, yeah. that whole universe, right? Yeah. As opposed to DC didn't, I mean, you had multiple oh, people. You don't, I mean, when it comes to Warner Brothers, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. It's, yeah, it's yeah. Whole, it was just a carousel a of leadership and visions, right? So, yeah, like we thought yeah, Jeff yeah. Johns was going to be the guy, but maybe not. Like, that doesn't seem sure. to be the case. But, uh, but yeah, in 2013, Affleck was cast as Batman for the DCEU. 
And um, so e- even as far back then, I'm sure there were nego- there were talks of a of a solo Batman film with him. In well, it. that's why he signed on. Like, yes, he signed on knowing that hey, th- part of the deal is, is you know you I you scratch you know I'll scratch your back, you scratch my back. Sure. In, in other words, of like I'll do this film if I can do a solo film, right? So that was yeah. Definitely and and I think by that by that point, obviously he had already had a track record uh, as a director. I think he had, exactly, won, yep. he had won an Oscar for, I think, The Town as, as director. The Town and uh, Ar- Argo also. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. even even as far back as, you know, 97, he, he was credited with co-writing Goodwill Hunting. So that was like his big mm. break. So, you know, he, he definitely had a pe- had a pedigree there. I'm sure, you know, having some creative control definitely, you know, inspired him to, to sign on for the role. So Affleck and Johns, they finished their first draft in 2016. And um, that was that wasn't going to be like a prequel or anything that was just going to pick up wherever wherever Justice League left off when they were filming Justice League. Originally, they had that uh, that post credits scene, which appeared in the Snyder cut, but what was reshot for like the the Whedon, you know, the theatrical, the Joss Whedon, you know, version of Justice League that came out that that was changed. But we had saw seen that original tease in the Zack Snyder uh, Justice League cut, which had Lex Luthor talking to Deathstroke and telling him that Bruce Wayne is Batman. Right. You know. Right. Uh, now, apparently, we were. It was sort of implied that Deathstroke and and Ben Affleck's Batman had had some sort of history that we had not seen on on screen, but it was implied that they had had some history at that point. So I guess he had. I guess Deathstroke wanted some revenge against Batman. So, I want to see that movie so bad. <laughs> so, but yeah, that was the movie that we were supposed to have. Right. Yeah. For one reason or another, um, maybe it came with uh, with management at Warner Brothers. I'm not sure what happened. I think uh, it's 100 percent with management at Warner Brothers. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess um, originally, like Kevin Sujihara was the CEO of Warner Brothers at the time. I think he got p- replaced by Walter Hamada. Yep. And um, so, you know, again, I'm not I'm not sure who who it was that made that decision, but and and now WB is being bought by Discovery. Really? Yeah. They're, they're about to have a big merger. Not a merger. It's, it's they're, just, they're, they're being acquired. They're, they're being acquired by is it, now. Is it Warner Discovery. Brothers Films or like Time Warner as a whole? You know, I I don't know. I just know I just heard that WB Time is Warner, being because Time Warner is such a humongous company. It, it is. It is. Yeah, for sure. For sure. They but I think like so many things. I'll have to look that up. But yeah, I know WB is being bought. I'll, I'll take a look. But go ahead. So there, there were a couple different uh, rewrites of it. I think, um, yeah, I think uh, Chris Terrio, who uh, ended up writing Justice League, uh, both versions of it, he turned in a rewrite of the script for the Batman in January of 2017. Now, I remember when, when this was happening because we had heard that Affleck was going to direct it as well, but then it was announced that he wasn't directing it, he was just focusing on starring in it and, and producing. Eventually, the, you know, Warner Brothers had started reevaluating their approach to, to DC films following, you know, because of the bad uh, reception that Batman vs. Superman had, and that supposedly just sidelined whatever plans that Ben had when it came to his version of the Batman. Man, it's so sad. Okay. So apparently just the, the bad reception with BVS is what did it in, which, you know, um, you know, it's unfortunate. I remember when I saw BVS and I thought, I'm like, mm, this, this could really cause things to go sideways. And unfortunately I, I turned out to be right. I didn't want to be right, but yeah. I had a feeling that that's what would sure. happen. Yeah. So I, I, I guess, and I guess the, the script, the script that they wanted to go with wasn't really what Ben wanted to do. So I guess he just stepped aside and just washed his hands of it. So, um, you know, that, that that's that's kind of unfortunately how it happened uh, from from what I can gather. Now, I know later this year, Ben is supposed to reprise the role in uh, in the Flash movie. If that is, if that is even coming out this year, which who knows? Isn't it pushback? No. I, yeah, I think I think I just did see something that it might be pushed back to 2023. So yeah, yeah. Uh, and and by the way, um, Warner Brothers 
Warner's Media is part of the deal that Discovery is buying. So it's actually going to be known as Warner Brothers. Was it Warner's Media D- Discovery? It's just called Warner Warner's Media Discovery. So, anyways, oh, but yeah, that is go. part of the deal that's being bought. Yeah, and, and and I think and I think at one point that there was talk about Matt Reeves directing Ben's version of the movie. I don't know how far I, that that got, but there, there were there were several directors that were attached to the project. There's Matt yeah, Reeves, yeah. Uh, Matt Ross, who I'm not familiar with, he, uh, Ridley Scott, Gavin O'Connor, uh, George Miller. Which George Miller, I remember that. That would that would have been interesting. Yep. Yeah. He he's a guy who like there was like a version in the 2000s. Justice I remember League that, Dark or something. Yeah, Justice League Mortal. I think was the the script Mortal, that he that's was it. attached to. So yeah. that would have been interesting. Uh, Dallas, uh, sorry, Dennis Villanueva. No, I'm not familiar with him. And Fede Alvarez. I guess he directed Evil Dead in 2013. I, I don't know anything about him. But they were all, those guys were all considered as replacement directors for Affleck. Um, obviously, Matt Reeves ended up getting it. Honestly, I don't think. And apparently, don't... apparently, Matt Reeves didn't really, you know, didn't really, wasn't really interested in the, um, in the in the movie that Ben wanted to make. Well, I don't think Ben was when that whole thing came out and everything was falling apart and they want new directors. I think that was literally like Ben was not going to be, um, you know, he's not going to go back on that contract they originally signed of like, hey, I'll do this. Then can I do my own? You know, like he is, he's well known already. He's established at that point. Yeah. And, uh, and when, so when they're asking them to, you know, take a step back and do all this, I don't, I don't think he was ever going to be directed by somebody else. And yeah, he said those words over at, uh, that Comic Con. He's like, oh man, I'll, you know, I'll be an ape for Matt Reeves or whatever it was, you know, like that's, that was just a, you know, please the crowd mm-hmm. type of moment, like know your audience type of deal. You know, and I don't, he, I don't think he was ever going to commit to it. Now, you, you mentioned the whole the Flash thing. I, I think maybe. No, I, <laughs> I, I have no idea what Ben Affleck and Matt Reeves's relationship is. Apparently, yeah, I guess may, maybe maybe Ben is a fan of his. Maybe they just, I, I, I guess they just wanted to make two different movies. It, it might be, might have been just as simple as that. But um, yeah. You know, either with, way. with Ben Affleck like agreeing to return in the Flash, which we all know this whole Flash point, I don't think it's going to be some kind of secret of like, you know, let's go ahead and just restart the universe with this Flash point. You know, like that's this is a hundred percent what they're going to do with this Flash point movie. You know, yeah, because they're I, coming out with what Aquaman two. I'm sure they're going to come out with a Wonder Woman three. Like. Yep. Shazam, and that's all from Shazam that 2 same. is is being filmed, I think. I don't know if they've wrapped production on that. Right. Shazam it's all in the same the universe. So I, I imagine they're doing something And, and Black Adam, that's too. Like, Black Adam's still happening. Right. Right. I'm just saying, it's probably going to... I don't know what they're going to do as far as, like, maybe they'll do a mix-up of universes. Like, you know, that's how you get this Wonder Woman and this... You know, Aquaman and whatnot in, in, uh, from this universe, but it got mixed in with this one. I don't know. That's what I, I mean, feel like. I, is, that's what they're going for. All I can say is that I, I I don't really have any desire to see like a Crisis on Infinite Earths movie. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Like right. we like we we had that on the CW. You know, with, with with that, and that and that was fun for what it was. But like, yeah. That's you know, look, I I saw Spider Man No Way Home. You know what I mean? Sure. I I saw that, and and look, that was a fun movie. I I I ended up enjoying that a lot more than I thought I would. It didn't make being, sense, but it was a fun movie. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it, look, that was far from a perfect movie, but like that's yeah, yeah. Again, like I, I, the the multiverse type of thing, that isn't really the type of movie that I'm interested in seeing. As much as I love these characters, and I'm sure it would be, it would have a lot of fun moments. I, I just, I'm not as excited about that prospect now. I mean, look, they're bringing back Michael Keaton for his Batman in the in, in the Flash movie. Yeah. Who knows what that's going to be like? And, and yeah. you know, look, I, I I loved Michael Keaton back in the day too, like everyone else. But it's you know, I, I well, guess I'm in, I guess I'm in the minority. Like I, I I don't have like the burning desire to see him come back. You know what I mean? 
I just I, I don't have burning desire, but I think I think the prospect of him coming back like they like to me he's my original Batman. Yeah, same know, here. For me and uh, just to kind of see him back on the big screen as Bruce yeah, Wayne. Yeah, there, there is a cool, there Batman. is a cool factor to it. Yeah, that's, that's a, there's a, definitely a cool factor to it, you know. So that that's the only thing I would say about that. But as far as kind of getting back to the Batman, you know, it's like I mean, obviously this one has to be its own sta- like. Standalone, you know, like they're doing these. It's like it's like you have a DCEU and then you have standalones, right? You got you have the Joker, yeah, standalone. Now you've got this Batman, the standalone. So it wasn't going to work with Ben Affleck, anyways. So yeah, yeah, and I guess Matt Reeves wanted to wanted it to be its own thing, and and that's what it ended up being. And this, yeah, sure. and the way this was shot and and the way it was presented reminded me a lot of the Todd Phillips Joker movie. Even the, even down to like the look of Gotham City looked very similar. Yeah. Full disclosure, I never watched it, but just seeing it, watching from uh, trailers and whatnot. But yeah, I can see that it it seems like it would be in the same world almost. Oh yeah, yeah. I I enjoyed the Joker movie actually. The, the, yeah. That ended up being being pretty good. It just um, I just can't. I I know there's a lot of depression in that. I just I just can't ever bring myself to to like actually watch. I started watch. I think I watched the first. 10 to 15 minutes of it. And yeah, and it was pretty depressing. It was like in the first 10 to 15 minutes. I was like, yeah. ah, like, then I had to do something else. And I was like, I just can't gear up to it. Yeah. You know? I would I would definitely recommend it to see it at least once, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I, I ended up buying it. I, en- I enjoyed the movie. I, I thought it was very well done. Okay. But it's it's kind of the same attitude I had for the Joker is kind of the one I had for this. It's like, you're kind of giving me a reboot of something. It's like a reboot that I didn't really ask for, you know? And so it's like, I wasn't sure what to, what to expect going into it, but you know, I knew that Robert Pattinson's a good actor. You know, I, I I've seen him in. Oh, things. for the, you talking about this movie. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about, talking about the joke. Yeah, what yeah, yeah. The Batman that ended up becoming. It's like, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I imagine I felt for, felt about this the same way that a lot of people did about the amazing Spider-Man when it came out in 2012. Do you remember, mm. do you remember a lot, what a lot of people said about that? Cause a lot of people were I like, just... were like, what we've seen Spider-Man already. Oh, it's, it's too soon for a reboot. Oh, this and that. And, uh, yeah. And a lot of people didn't, yeah, yeah. didn't really give that movie a chance. I, I thought, be, you know, because of that. Dude, that made the, at first amazing Spider-Man movie. I like that movie a lot. It was great. Like a ton. It was a great movie. Me too. Me too. I, re- yeah. I really enjoyed that first one. And yep. so it's like, I wonder if those same people kind of feel the same way about this version of the Batman, how it comes out. So I don't know. That remains to be seen. But but yeah, th- this movie, I you know, I knew that there was a lot of, lot of positive feedback, a lot of positive buzz to it. Yep. And um, yeah, so I, I was excited to go into it with that. And um you know, I, uh, I'm not sure where they're going to where they're going to go with this, like h- how far they're going to go with the sequels. I'm sure Matt Reeves probably has at least, you know, a sequel or two that he, that he wants to make. And I'm sure they will. Because well, mo- I mean, he, he already teased, right? He already teased at mm-hmm. the end. Like, yes. I mean, it is again, this is all spoiler talk. So but uh, I mean, he's he already teased at the end that, you know, there's a Joker that's already established in this world. Yeah, right. yeah. The the actor they had it was uh, Barry Keegan, I think is how you pronounce it. He's an Irish so that, actor. Is that actually confirmed? He Matt Reeves pretty much said it in interviews that yeah, yeah, he's the Joker. Okay, okay. I couldn't remember if it was actually confirmed. I knew, I knew that was like the big. They didn't come out and say it in the movie, but apparently, according to the, this interview that Matt Reeves did, he said, "Yes, it's the Joker, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to be the villain of my next movie." Gotcha. Which is an interesting thing to say. I think, I mean, I don't know if I totally believe that, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> but it could have been his way of saying, yeah, the Joker's here, but you know, we might not necessarily get to him right away, but at least you know that he's here and he exists. Which, okay, right? Because he's in Arkham Asylum, so I guess they could go with like just keep him in there and then have somebody else come in. I guess. Yeah, and, and like we different... don't we don't really know where the Joker is at at this point of the timeline if he's. If he's even fully the Joker yet, if he, if, oh you know, yeah 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 right right, you right. know if he's maybe you know whatever just a, like a just like a psycho killer or something no name criminal he is you know right Jack right. Napier or whatever 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 name you want to give him, 
But, right. um, but yeah, that, that, so, so that, that could be a, a way to go about it. But I mean, overall, I, I enjoyed this movie. I yeah. didn't, I wasn't over the moon about it. I like, I didn't love it. Yeah. I had a few issues with it. With I definitely more. had several issues with it, but I think overall it's a fun, it's a, it's an enjoyable movie overall. It is. It is. I thought it was well cast. I didn't really have any issues with any of the casting. I, 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 I thought, you know, the performances were pretty good. I liked the, the, the tone of it was cool. It, it definitely felt yeah. like very like noir. It, it was more right. of a, they said it was going to be more of a detective story and it was like they, they yeah. really, they really focused on the detective side of Batman, which is, which was great. Like I, I really enjoyed a lot of that stuff and right. there wasn't a ton of action throughout it, but the action scenes they had, I thought were fantastic. I think I, I felt like it was, I think I told you, I just felt like I was watching like kind of like the nineties uh, animated series of the Batman. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Just because of the, you know, how the characters dressed and how they talk. Right. It was very mafia mobster. Yes. Which, you know, you don't really get that in New York. Like, in these days, like this, you don't have that mafia mobster talk, you know. Right. Well, I mean, you have New York accents, but oh, sure, yeah. Like, you know, uh, it, was a, it, it, it was interesting to see the um, to see the way they played the penguin. Yeah, dude, the penguin was awesome. <laughs> yeah, and you I, would have I, never. I'm sorry if you if I if if I never knew that was Colin Farrell. Colin unrecognizable. Farrell, right? There, if you didn't tell me that that was him beforehand, and I didn't know, like, there's no, I wouldn't have been able to guess. Like, yeah, that was yeah, I, and that's the thing that like Colin Farrell as the Penguin, even even when they announced that back then, and I I saw some like early images of what he looked like. Yeah, it's still a bit of a head scratcher. Like, huh? Like, I mean, he was great at it. Like, I I think yeah. he had the best performance in in the movie. Like, you know, he's, he did. I agree. You know, it, it almost seems like Oscar bait. Like he's trying to, <laughs> like he's trying to go for something that's completely against type. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I wonder if he actually did put on weight for this role. It looks like he did put on some weight. You I know? mean, I, I don't know. I mean, he's like one of the most handsome dudes on the planet. So like they really like made him look different. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously the face. There's going to be a good amount of prosthetics, but like I, I still mean, think he, he had like, to put on some weight. He he looked like James Gandolfini playing Tony Soprano. Like that's kind of how he played. <laughs> Penguin, which I thought was an interesting choice. I, you know, it is. It is. I, I mean, look, I, I think it's the best live action penguin that I've seen so far. In my, I opinion. agree. I agree. I agree. I think, yeah, I really, I really enjoyed uh, his performance. It was as hilarious as they made him actually waddle in this film. A like, little bit, yeah. At one point, when his legs were tied <laughs> up, so that was when his legs were tied up. I'm like, oh, look at it. Like, they I mean, I'm just glad like, they didn't. I'm glad they didn't make him laugh like Burgess Meredith in the series. Like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> glad they didn't do that. <laughs> or, whatever, or whatever the hell Danny DeVito was supposed to be in Batman Returns. That, yeah, that, whatever that, that was. That was, that um, was just a uh, uh, what's, Tim, what's that director? That was Tim, Tim Burton. That was just going a Burton nuts. Yeah, I was gonna say a Burton, Burton next. Type of you know yeah. move, but uh, don't, yeah, don't get me started sure. on that movie. But <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like I, I mean, I would love to see a penguin that was more like in uh, the, the '90s animated series, where which I feel like that's the most comic accurate, where it's he's like the gentleman of crime. He's very like buttoned yeah. down, and he's like, oh well, dear Dark Knight. So <laughs> he's kind of yeah. you know. He, but he, I, like, but he, I also loved it because he had a temper. He did, yeah, and yeah. and I, I I enjoyed this this version of the penguin, and I think yeah. I think that was a good way to play him. How he's you know a mob boss basically, which yep. is that's very comic book accurate. Yeah, no, it's, it's funny. I didn't realize Oswald Cobblepot was a, was an Italian name. <laughs> he, he sounded like a paisan. Hey, what are you doing there, sweetheart? <laughs> you know. Oh, I mean, know, I don't know how he got the yeah. I don't know how the name came about, but maybe you know, like that was his name, and he grew up in the monster area. I don't know. Hey, I, I grew right. up in the Northeast. He sounded like a couple of my uncle's buddies, but that's that's a whole that's a whole different thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, but yeah, no, I really thought like it just it just how they talked. It was very you know the monster whole thing and the look of it. I just felt like oh, like this is like the '90s Batman, you know that noir. Very much type so. of look, yeah. So um, I, enjoy, I did enjoy that. I completely that. forgot that John Turturro was cast as Carmine Falcone. He was I, brilliant. He was perfect. So I am not a big John Turturro being John Turturro, but yeah, I'm not a big John Turturro uh, no? fan. 
I am just now. I think what ruined me is, and and, and it sucks. The Transformers. Yeah, the whole Transformers movie yeah. really ruined, like my. Yeah, well, he was he was just hamming it up like him. crazy as Seymour Simmons. I think yeah. it's just now because of that. It's like when I see him in something else, like just hearing you, him. You just think about I, that guy. It's just completely tainted my entire vision of him. Like, I think, I'm sure he did a great job. I'm, you know, he did a good job with this one, but I just, I thought, I'm sorry. I know it's wrong. I, sh- I should judge him on his own merits for each movie. Yeah. But I just, I just, I think it's just, I don't, when I hear his voice and his acting, I just, I don't, it's hard to separate. No, I, I, I get that. Like, I get that. I, I know that. Yeah, yeah. I know that he is, he is a very serious dramatic actor as well. So I, I feel like I kind of saw that side in this movie much, yeah. much more than, I mean, the Transformers, you know, he was just camping it up and being goofy and like, that's what he yeah. was told to do. And, and he like, can, if, if, like if he can do funny stuff as well. Like I loved him in Mr. Deeds, for example. Yeah. Oh, okay. You remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gosh, that was so long ago. He was the butler in Mr. Deeds. He was a star. Yeah, yeah, he was hilarious. I got from one. Space. See, that's, that's another, I think that's, I think that's, I think that's all I ever know him as is comedy, maybe. Yeah. You know, like, but, but, but um, like he, yeah, he's done some like really serious roles over the years. Like he's a very, like if you, you give know, me the accomplished actor, mind Falcone, if you give me the Falcone of Nolan's compared to this one, I, I would take Nolan's Falcone. Like uh, Tom Wilkinson. Yeah. Yeah. I would yeah, definitely, no, I mean, definitely, over. definitely two very different interpretations of it. But, uh, but I, yeah, I thought, yeah. I thought he did a good job in this. Yeah, should we go down like you know like the list of like you know some of the plot points, or do you want to go through like the cast or? Uh... Yeah, maybe like maybe we can just go through some of these pros and some of these cons, right? I mean, we're we're talking about some of the pros. Um, you know, we, maybe we just talk. We can talk some of the pros of each of each maybe of each uh, actor and their, um, you know, yeah. and what they're doing. You know, like so. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, let's just go with the star of the show first, all right? Let's with let's Robert. go with the actual yeah. Let's go with the yeah. star of the show. You know, with Robert Pattinson, obviously, like you know, there's a lot of jokes. That yeah, you're, I mean, he's him, always going to get the Twilight jokes and and everything. He's else. definitely going to do that. You know, it's like oh, if you you play if you play a vampire vampire long Turn enough, you become the bat, bat, right? Of and, course. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it's great, you know, it's fun. and like, I will say, I, I have a lot of respect for Pattinson since Twilight, because he's done some really good, um, he, he's done some really good work after that, you know, he was so young in Twilight, and, you know, he was just looking to, like, get into Hollywood, you know, mm-hmm. so, he didn't have a whole lot of choices, I don't think, uh, back then, but like, but, uh, but he's made some good choices since then, and, and he has, um, you know, he's, he's done well and I wanted to give him a chance. I, I think my, so I'm going to start with the, with my, with my cons because there, because the pros are there, there's more pros than there are cons. Okay. So Agreed. I'm just, yeah. um, I'm just going to go with the cons since it's a, that's a short list for me. Um, and the con for like my biggest fear for uh, with him being Batman was was that uh, or in this role rather kind of came true and is that like I don't know if I'm gonna be able to see him as Bruce Wayne okay right. and um, that's and, that's sort of been the general consensus that his take on Bruce Wayne and it and it was by and that was by design that that's how the character was written but his Bruce Wayne in this movie wasn't like he he's not at like the billionaire playboy he doesn't play up the persona as much like he, he doesn't acts he doesn't pretty much the same i mean like batman is who he is you know for sure, sure. and and that's course, always been the course. case for for batman and yeah bruce wayne. And, well but, like, he just doesn't he he played bruce wayne as more of a more of like a recluse yeah i think i, I told you you know kind of off screen is like he reminded me i think he would have been perfect for like terry mcginnis right uh, Terry McGinnis and uh, and Batman, Batman Beyond. Beyond. Yeah, like I see him more as that guy. Okay. Or or maybe or maybe even like um you know Nightwing like Nightwing slash um gosh what's his name um, Dick Grayson. Yeah, Dick Grayson. I can uh, see I, him more. I, of like, I I don't know. Like I mean, Dick Grayson is a much more positive character than than what uh <laughs> I guess what what Bruce Wayne well, was in you this know, movie. I'm talking. I guess I guess it's more like the eye test for me right it's more the eye test because he's a younger looking guy i mean he's younger than you and i are but you know right 
Right. It doesn't matter if it's him. I think it's just Bruce Wayne. I think the perfect Bruce Wayne is more like a Ben Affleck, right? Like, to me, Ben Affleck had it had to go and as far as like you know in the suit like hey that is that is a menacing menacing guy that is like somebody you don't want to mess with uh and very intimidating and then as bruce wayne it's like he he's he's he looked like he looked the part the eye test of like oh, yeah. you look at this guy and you're like wow this, this guy you you command respect out of this guy he commands respect out of this guy you know like so, and christian bale both both of those guys really uh kind of nailed it i thought yeah yeah yeah, and so, but with him, I, I think I don't, I just don't see it with him um, as as Bruce Wayne. Uh, it, it, he just, I just kept thinking of Terry McGinnis, to be honest with you. Interesting, you know. So, so that's that's the way. I mean, like, I just don't buy him as Bruce Wayne. But interesting enough, like they hardly showed him as Bruce Wayne in this, and and even when they did show him as Bruce Wayne, he still it was still Batman as Bruce Wayne, right? There was no. To me, yeah. this is again my con is that like mm-hmm. there wasn't any differentiation between the two characters, and to which there sh- should be a giant difference between the two characters. You know, like the one's his persona and mm-hmm. one's the actual him. You know, which is wants to cover up the other one, right? It's like mm-hmm. it just looked like and here's Batman without his suit, right? It's walking right. around, you know, staring at people. Being all mad and brooding. I mean, at, at one point, like, he literally knocked on the door of the club as both Bruce Wayne and Batman. <laughs> right, it's true. Right, exactly. Which uh, uh, that was a pretty wild visual, by the way. Just just see him knock on the door as Batman. Like, right, right. He right. doesn't. Batman normally doesn't do front doors. You know. No, no, definitely not. Definitely but it was kind of funny. It just he's like, hey, you know who I am, and they're like, oh, yeah. yep, back away. <laughs> well, no, they had, no, they had like they, he. That's when he. Um, it's the two brothers, right? He would always yeah, the, close the, the door and then get get, get and then get the brother <laughs> to right. open it back up. It was like every single time. That's how we it would answer that door. That's that was, hilarious. That was pretty great. Yeah, um, yeah, but I, like I, you know, that's that would be those. Are my, that's my con with with Paz. Like he's a good actor, you know, and like yes, they're asking them to like, I don't know, I guess be more brute and. And so, like, yeah, the act, the the attitude wasn't any different. That didn't help at all. But I think the eye test for me still just doesn't. I don't believe that that's actually Bruce Wayne. That's just me. Right. You know? Yeah, I, I see. But, I see what you're saying, and and I agree with you about um, you know, about the difference between the Bruce Wayne persona and how he acted as Batman. I I mean, obviously that wasn't Pattinson's call. He was doing what he was told to do. You're right. I, I guess that part of it, uh, that seems to be the general consensus that his Bruce Wayne and Batman were very similar. Uh, yeah. That, that seems to be the consensus across the board. It, yeah. I mean, personally, it doesn't bother me as much just knowing that this is a younger, less experienced Batman that he might not. He's in have. his year two, and he's like well known in this. I, I agree. Well known around. I agree. Let, 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 <laughs> let, let, let me just finish my point here. This is in Batman Begins now. now. I, I know. You know, but you got people in close. Arkham Asylum already because of him. I, right? I, I know. I'm just saying it, it's pretty close because he's a younger, less experienced Batman. I'm thinking like, okay, well, maybe he's not there yet. Maybe we could see that in in a sequel or two. I hope we do. Yeah, I you understand know. that. I just feel like. He should be there. You already. feel like he should right be now. at that point by by yeah. by year two, which is which is yeah. fair. That that, that right. that's that's a fair opinion to have. I think it'd be different if it was a year two, as in like he didn't do anything year one, and hardly anyone as knows of Batman. Yeah. Um. Then that'd be different. But he's a well established character in this movie. Like everybody yeah. fears the Batman. Everybody right. fears the Batman. Like you see that sign, everybody's. Everybody's running. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got people already locked up in Arkham Asylum because of him. Uh, he's well established in this year two, you know, so to say. So that's that's where my gripe is. If again, if it was year two, as in like he still is not doing much, and people don't really know, he's just more like a mythical figure. Like, is he real? Is he not? We don't yeah, know, we, but which, people aren't scared, you know. Yeah, which which but, yeah. I, I I don't. I don't think that's a bad interpretation of it either, where where it's like people outside of Gotham are like, wait a minute, Batman's real? Like he's a real right. thing where he's like has that mythical status. Right, where right. It's, obviously, he's not going to be doing like press interviews. You know? <laughs> yeah. 
But I feel like he's not that. I feel like he's our, he is well established. Like people know time. people know that he exi- exists. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. So, anyways, but yeah, I mean, continue on, continue on. No, I I, I, I was just saying that. I mean, that's definitely a, a valid observation. Um, and a, a lot of a lot of people observed, and a lot of people complained about mm-hmm. it, which I I didn't really think about it at the time, but that you know just the the, the way. You know Pattinson's like his build, his physique. That mm-hmm. that he was a little bit, little bit on the thinner side. Yeah, wasn't really like didn't really have like the the muscle or, or he didn't look yep. like he was in the right shape for it. Right. That a lot of that a lot of people have come to expect. I mean, you Man, look at, and I think that, you look I at how like what... jacked up that that Ben and, and Christian had gotten for when right. they had played it. Right. Um. So I, I think I that think... kind of plays into the factor of my eye test for me as Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Because in the suit, the suit. Literally makes them bigger. The suit can hide a lot, you know. No, it it, it definitely hides it, and it definitely makes them look bigger. Like it is, yes. like, it's like looking at it's like, oh my gosh, like he's that suit is like, if you take him out of that suit, it looks like a completely different person, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like that looks like yeah, a ton I, of them. I, yeah. There's, I mean, there's that sense of believability. Like you want to look at this guy and think like, okay, this guy's clearly athletic. He can. He, yep. he would be in the type of shape that that Batman might be, and yeah. not that he has cool. necessarily not that he has to look like Hugh Jackman did as Wolverine, where it's like looks sure, like he sure. hasn't had water for like three days in order to get all those abs. But you know, yeah, you yeah, know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I think okay, so yeah, I think those that was my con is is the him as Bruce Wayne, um, you know, and then uh, we were talking about the year two, the whole established, you know, he's just. He's established already, and I feel like he should be there as Bruce Wayne. But then I think the other con, which you just brought it up about athleticism, and like this is not the most athletic Batman we've seen on mm. on screen. Uh, I was like immediately as soon as I started fighting, I was like, okay, this is more of the like maybe a little bit more like the Christian Bale, right. uh, where it's like you know you have big punches. And a big, big kicks and and a big slam, but it's You're not this the, is, the fight. The fighting style itself. The fighting style itself, like it just, I don't see it. I, it doesn't scream athleticism to me. Like it, it just yeah. screams as like this guy can defend himself and he can do big punches and slams, uh, yeah. type of deal. You know, I don't like I, I don't see it. You know, like the uh, Ben and so the Ben Affleck one where he had the um the uh, manufacturer scene where he's. Uh, what is it? The warehouse. The warehouse. Where he busted yeah. into the warehouse. Yeah, that's yeah. that to that, me is that, one of my favorite Batman scenes. Ever. That is like, like, that was yes. incredible. That was like that was a true like animated come to life scene. Like that looked like the real Batman just going at it. Like it, super it looked athletic. like it was right out of the Arkham City video game. Like it was yeah. He was all over the place. It was great. Super. He was a big dude and super athletic and this and that. As opposed, you know, and you know what? That's fine. You don't, you don't have to have a super athletic guy every time. But like, for me, it, you know, that that's still like, man, I, I, I wish Batman was a little more athletic on on yeah. uh, than like than he, what like, they portray. And, like, he doesn't even have to be the biggest guy, but just at least no. look like you're in in shape. And <laughs> yeah, I'm not not saying that Robert Pattinson's not in shape. I mean, but but it's yeah. just, I think the the way it was shot, it didn't come off as believable to to yeah. a lot of yeah. people out there. And but it, I will say it got the point across, though, right? It I did. mean, he's it's he's still intimidating, like, and he yes. will mess you up if you if you if you cross him or whatever, you know, if you go against him, he will mess you up. So it yeah, got the yeah. point across. You know, you you were talking about uh, the fight scenes in this movie, and I'm just you know going on my own experience as a guy who's done martial arts since I was a kid here and there, and yeah, I know that Batman, you know, traditionally Batman is the guy who studied pretty much every fighting style there is right. and, and has his own way of doing things. And I, I think about, um, you know, types of self-defense that, that I've done over the years that I've trained in, like um, in, Taekwondo has been my main thing. I, I have a, I got a black belt in that, you, you know, when I was a kid, So a lot, a lot of kicks is your main thing, basically. Uh, a lot uh, of yeah. Legs. Taekwondo is a, is a lot, a lot of kicks, a lot, you know, yeah. you know, from, you know, from, yeah. from distance, a lot, a lot of footwork, a, yeah. a little bit, a little bit of handwork too as well sure of course i'm just in terms of like traditional it. taekwondo but mixing that right. with you know karate and also um krav maga which is which is an israeli uh which mm. is an israeli you know self-defense technique that's like yeah. that you know it, it's like you 
taking what's useful and eliminating what's not. It's very much like close in close quarters, just trying to try to diffuse a situation. So I like that. I don't bump into as much because I, I feel like Batman would be the type of guy to the type of fighter to not not be overly flashy, but be very like functional, get it done, move on to the next guy, not necessarily do like Donnie Yen jump spinning kicks. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So that, that, that I didn't, that didn't really bother me as much. I, I, I mean, I didn't think the fight scenes were necessarily as good as the, the stuff that Ben did in, right. uh, in BBS I just, and there's Justice. There's no way. <laughs> to me, it doesn't even compare for me. But I, I, I did think it was shot a little bit better than like the Dark Knight footage where, um, mm. you know, I felt, and that, that had less to do with the way Christian Bale was fighting and more to do with just the, the camera angles that were used, I think. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like with Christian Bale, like he'd be fighting in clothes, a lot be a lot of knees and elbows, which, yeah. which would yep. be how you would do it. If, especially if you're right up against a person, you'd want to do right. forearms, knees, elbows, and not, not so much like swinging haymakers and stuff exactly. like that. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Definitely. So this, I mean, I love the the subway fight scene where he was just beating the crap out of that one clown, clown face looking guy. Right. Right. Um, I thought that was a great scene. It was like a oh, the good wham, scene. wham, wham, wham. <laughs> just the way he, they held on that shot, I thought was, yeah. was fantastic. And I'm sorry, this is this is gonna go into uh, you know uh, a little. Uh, <laughs> This is a little bit topic that you and I debate over all oh, the time. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, are we all talking right. about the, the killing and no guns thing? Yeah. So, first of all, I I hated that they mentioned the whole no gun thing in this one because it was such a big contradictory for me in, in the film. Just because, like, I'm sorry, but they show the br- how brutal he is. What he was doing those people, there's um, those guys, those guys would have, they would have been dead. But of course they have to show it like, oh, he's, he's still alive. Look at that. Even after all that, those, those brutal punches. This has been a big sticking point with you for a while. Like it is, it is for sure. Now let me ask you this. Is this because either you think he should be killing or, or is it because you think just the way they frame it, it just makes him look hypocritical or is it some combination of the two? I don't, it's not necessarily, uh, I should be, I'm thinking that like he should be killing, right? But like, I do think, uh, there's just no way around it. And, and like, if you have to get realistic, maybe there's like, there's certain situations, of course, he can get around it. But there's, mm-hmm. there's other times where it's just, there's just no way around that he's, he's, he has, there comes to a point where he's got to do what he's got to do in order to, right? The, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, okay? I, so, I agree with that. I, and I, so there's just, I, when he comes, when you're fighting that many bad bad guys, and there's you know city level threats and whatnot, and you've got like, to defend yourself, and you know, and you got to defend yeah. yourself, and you got to defend the city. There's just the points: the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, and that's just. I'm not saying that like he's some bad man, okay? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying like that's what. Comes yeah, you're not with, saying he needs to just like put a bullet through the Joker's head or something. Exactly. Even yeah. though that wouldn't exactly. be a bad idea. <laughs> right. Exactly. And I'm. I'm I don't think it's not... Batman who should do it, though. That's just me. <laughs> and I'm certainly not saying he's some mass murderer. You know, he's yes. going out there to just like, uh, just just ma- kill a massive amount of people that he thinks are bad guys or anything mm-hmm. like that. I'm just saying, you know, it comes with the territory. He's he's gonna have to be a killer at some point there or some points uh, that he's uh, that. He's in certain situations, you know, when you literally like, mm-hmm. so like, you know, if you're putting somebody in a bad situation, yeah, okay, and and then you leave and knowing that there's no way they're going to be able to get out of that and they would, the, the, the end result is their death, that's killing somebody, right? right. That just, just because you didn't physically do something with your hand on him, mm-hmm. like whether whether you actually physically beat him to death or you pulled some kind of trigger or you had some kind of weapon in your hand whatever like you still the fact that you're causing somebody to die because of your hands of your doing that's you're a killer that's just the way it is i mean unfortunately with some of these people they got they're gonna have to go because there's no other choice right you, so Honestly, I, feel, I feel like you and i agree on this issue a lot more than than you might think I agree. Yeah. And I think I, I, I and, feel like I feel like some of the films and some of the stories could probably do a better job of communicating that, which, you know, I, 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 I think and, I think I think it's good for Batman to have the ideal that like he's not 
he's not out there to kill people. And I think that, and I would argue that makes him a more interesting character that like he, that he doesn't want to do that. And that right. he, that he is against guns and everything. I feel like that makes him more interesting. You know, I, I, I feel but like, like you know, he, I don't he get, is, I don't get, I don't get the whole, hang, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on a second. Thing. I don't hang get that second. because that's not always the case in the comic book. Let me, let me finish, John. Go ahead. Right? Go ahead. So I, I think it's good for him to have an ideal to strive toward. Okay. You know, I that, agree. Like I agree. That, that's, that's, that's part of sort of his code and that he doesn't want to break that. However, I do think it, I do think it is interesting to see what the, what the after effects are like, okay, well, if this happens, for example, like if he's chasing down criminals in the Batmobile or with the Batwing, you know, it's very, it's a lot harder to, to control that outcome as far as, you know, if you're trying to stop people, it's a lot riskier and there's a bigger chance of, of there being a fatality there. I'm not right. saying that I'm not saying that he should seek to do that, that he's like actively trying to kill people, but at least so like, so but, like, but, 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 but at least like, okay. but at least say that like, okay, well this happens and it's unfortunate. And it's like, have him be like, okay, well this isn't what I wanted to do, but I had no other choice. And that was just how it is. And it just at least show some like, and I'm sure there would be some level of remorse on his part for that. I feel like as long as you're communicating that and if it's like, okay, well, this is his ideal that he, he might sometimes fall short of, but at least he still has that ideal and that, and that sense of morality. I feel like I mean, that there, would be, there was definitely some, some deaths in that car chase, right? Yes. No, I, I, <laughs> and, and, and I, and I understand that a lot of deaths in that car chase. Cause it had, I, right. It, yes. Yeah. I mean, right. yeah, there's, there's, there's no two ways about it. That, that, that's, that's what I'm okay. saying. Yep. The reason why he doesn't like guns in particular, because that's how his parents were killed. And that's just sort of a personal thing for him. I mean, yes, there have been, yes, there have been other, you know, situations. But like he's got like and, and, so many weapons. I, I, I know. But <laughs> he's got look, so I'm not. Weapons. I'm sorry. Those weapons are going to eventually kill people, not whether he likes it or not. Yeah, right? no, I, 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 I agree. I agree. I'm not, look, I'm not saying whether or not he should use them or not. I'm just saying that's, that traditionally yeah. has been his rationale behind it. So that and, being said, I feel like you and I agree on this a lot more than you might think. I, I, I feel like you yeah. and I are, are kind of kind of on, yeah, on the same I, page I about that. Too. And like, and I will say on this one, I will say the framing on this one was um, was definitely showing. Like, I'm like, okay, he's he just killed this guy, and then it's like it's a cheap knockoff to be like, oh, let's do a little short sh- scene to show the guy on the ground kind of moaning I'm like no like that guy his, his brains just got beaten by batman by batman there's no way like that guy on the subway mm-hmm. where he's like you know he tells him i'm vengeance after yeah. he's you know about five or six right death blows, like shots right? right to the head yeah and i'm he'd at the very least have he, some severe brain damage oh with at the very least if if not actually dead like i'm like, sorry bro, he con- just con- con- concussions he just are killed a real that thing. guy you know <laughs> So anyways, and it's like, it's like, okay, this guy, this guy's a little bit brutal, but like, it just, I think that's, it just kind of gets, it just, uh, it's just a little, I'm not, not a pet peeve of mine now, but it's more like, like that, that was, just, it's, it was cheap, like to kind of show let, some let of these stuff. Do, do like, you think that he was a little bit too brutal in the movie? I don't, he, he probably was a little too brutal at some points, uh, considering that like, if he doesn't actually want to kill people. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if he, if you're trying to show him as like somebody who actually is concerned about people's lives, good or bad, um, then yeah, then I would say he was a little too brutal, uh, for that, for that kind of ideal, right? Yeah. So there's just the, the, the scene at the end where he, um, like injected himself with what looked, which what, what I thought was venom. Which is the drug that Bane has taken in the comics? I, so I some thought, people have have that's brought a, that's that up. A theory. I, I, that, was that your your initial thought when you did that when you saw it? I, well, I mean, I don't remember if that's the first thing I thought about. At, at first, I thought it was like, oh, well, he's got some adrenaline. But then when someone that's brought the, yeah. it, yeah, I, I mean, I didn't think it. But when someone brought it up, I'm was. like, oh yeah, that 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 could have been Venom, or at least what could become Venom. What could in, become in Venom? Sequel, if, if well, they, it could link to it. 
Right, exactly. Yeah, because I just thought like, oh, this is just he just got some adrenaline because just because of, you know, he was in a bad situation. He needed something to get himself back up. And then he got adrenaline and he, he was already at a point where he was ticked off. So it that just mm-hmm. he just kept going with that with ra- some rage. Yeah, al- almost know? to the point of it being a, a little too far for that. Like it was a little out of character almost to see a little that bit. unhinged. That's you what it, well, they had that like several several times. Even in I'm sorry, I'm telling you, in the beginning when he beat up that guy in the subway, yeah. I'm like, like, I'm oh, like dude, oh, that's... okay, all right, you you already got him. You like you don't have to hit him. <laughs> like, three okay, more that times. guy's dead. That guy's dead. You don't have to, you, you don't have you to do it first. anymore. <laughs> you made your point, all right. So yeah, I I would say the framing on this one, like maybe maybe if since they were trying to go with the the whole ideal that like you know maybe. I don't know if he has that ideal of of trying to save lives, uh, good or bad. I don't know if they if they because you know they they had like a the whole arc for him in this one where he's like, you know, oh I I may I was too focused on you know beating the crap out of these criminals that I forgot to actually save people. Right, that's kind of like their arc in this one. Right. Yeah, that that's like kind of what they were trying to communicate in this one. And, so may, maybe, again, like, maybe that's why they're showing the brutal side. But again, if you're going to show the brutal side, don't go with a cheap little aftershot of the guy being mm-hmm. pretty much okay. Like, that guy's gotcha. not okay. Okay. <laughs> no, fair enough. No. Fair enough. I, I, yeah, I yeah. see what you're saying. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying. And I think that might have been what they were going for. Um yep. A couple, a couple of cons in the story that kind of stood out to me right away. Okay. The, um, the backstory about, about Thomas Wayne. Mm, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Supposedly, yeah. like, you know, going to Carmine Falcone to protect, because I guess apparently Martha, uh, Martha Wayne, who in the comics, her maiden name was Kane. She came from another wealthy family in Gotham, the Canes. Which is a, a reference to Bob Kane, one of the one of the creators of Batman. Oh, cool. Um, but yeah, so and I thought that was apparently she was related to the Arkham family, and Which... apparently apparently Martha had some mental health issues when she was younger, because I guess her parents, or like or I think her mom killed her dad in like a murder suicide type of thing, like a really dark, darker backstory than I had. You know, ever Way imagined for uh, for for Martha, yeah. and apparently she had spent time in in mental institutions. And Thomas Wayne was running for mayor, which is another plot point they had from the Todd Phillips Joker movie, by the way. Mm. Like that's that's ne- that had never been a thing in the comics, as far in as the I comics. know. Yeah, yeah, he was Where, just kind of like a you know a rich guy that lo- lo- looked after this, uh, like not looked after the city, but like contributed a lot to this. Yes, story. he was a philanthropist. Yeah. Um yeah. obviously he in- inherited his money from the Wayne family fortune. He was a he was a doctor by trade. He was a physician. Yep. Like yep. That, yep. That, that that was his his main job. He was Dr. Thomas Wayne. And, and I think uh and I think Martha Wayne was a teacher. I believe I don't it, know. It, it, yeah, like in, in some stories she was like a teacher and she would like help out with like inner city kids and like have a lot of charitable foundations for that, which I think is great because I think, you know, part of Bruce Wayne's moral center comes from the example that his parents led, even though he lost his parents when he was younger, they've always traditionally been depicted as being pretty good people. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know how I feel about this idea that maybe Thomas, you know, made some sort of deal with the Falcon, the Falcons to try to cover up, you know, his wife's history. I, um, I didn't, I don't know. Now, now they did, they did walk it back later and say that he was about to, to, to tell the cops everything. And like, he felt bad about it, that he made this mistake that, yeah. you know, which, which is fine. I just, I wonder why I, I, I just felt like it was unnecessary to put that side plot in there at, at, at all. Cause it's like, now, now that you've, now that you've kind of brought that up the way you have, I totally, I totally agree with you. Like, yeah, yeah, I yeah, can totally. We, we, I didn't think of it that way. Yeah, we, we, which is fine. I mean, because they didn't completely undermine what what Thomas and Martha Wayne were all about. But yeah. it's just like, I mean, I guess they were trying to they were trying to present them as flawed human beings, which made mistakes. Which that's fine. I, I, I've got no problem with that. But 
At but the, the thing time. about the Martha and um, and Thomas is like that's that's where Batman slash Bruce Wayne gets his mor- moral moral compass from. Yes, right? from them and, and from Alfred, of course, uh, and from obviously. Alfred. But like you know, that's kind of like his guiding factor. Yes, for he, him, he wanted right? to follow his parents' example. Yeah, and um, yeah, yeah. So so what was I saying? But but my whole point was like, you know, like. I, I, I don't know. I just didn't think it was necessary to introduce that layer to his parents or just imply that they weren't good people. I, I, I just I don't see what purpose that really served. I, I don't think I agree. I, I, I from a, from anything, a narrative it portion, I, the I, character of Batman, I feel I, like I, I think it does. And it's, you know, it's an interesting idea, but I just I don't see what real purpose it serves for Batman. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, unless, the, unless this was some sort of social commentary on the part of Matt Reeves about the about the nature of wealth in America, which like, you know, I, I just I just felt it rang kind of hollow. It's like, you know, what yeah. are you trying to say that all rich people rich, are yeah. somehow <laughs> corrupt? And, and it's like, I, I just I don't buy that. Yeah, yeah. I don't buy that at all. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I just I don't think and I don't think it's really necessary to add that layer into you know, this particular iteration of the Batman. Yeah, now, I can that being totally said, it, it didn't completely ruin the movie for me, but it was just, sure. it was a minor nit, nitpick that I had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's a very valid point, to be honest with you. Um, what else? And I, I think the biggest, you know, as, as far as, uh, as far as plot goes, I, like the, the end scene with the Riddler and the whole thing about him bombing the seawall and flooding the yeah. city. Yeah, you and I mentioned this. Together. <laughs> we talked about that, and, and that, and yeah. that's we're not the only ones who have said this. I've listened okay. to other reviews, and a lot of people okay. have said this that it feels like that might have been the studio note that was tacked on. Be like, yeah. hey, you know, we we have to have a big action sequence at the end. You know, like, like to kind of peg it on on the Riddler like that, where it's like completely out of character. This entire you've set up, you've literally set up this character the entire you know, 80% of the movie or 90% of the movie. And, and then all of a sudden you just had like this last 15% of the movie where he's like, I'm going to bomb the city. <laughs> and like, yeah. Like, I, I mean, what, like, that, what, what, what was his from? rationale for doing that? And unless it was like some sort of backup plan in case things didn't go well, but it, like, even then it, it didn't really no. fit with what his motive was. No. So like, it wasn't a backup plan because that was he, like, he, it was everything was, he planned everything out. Right. That was his right. whole thing. And like, even like towards the end when he was he even in turned jail, himself in, he turned himself in. And when he was in jail, he was like, you know, like he was counting down all the booms and all that. But like, wait, wait, so like it which, was, which by the way, that's kind of another thing that bothered me. Like the Riddler kind of got everything he wanted. Yeah. Like, <laughs> He did. Like when you he when did. you think about it, like the Batman didn't Batman didn't really do much of anything to stop him. No, he didn't. He didn't. Um, like he kind of had Batman's number at every turn, and then just turned himself in. <laughs> he did. <laughs> he did. Like the Batman is like a Batman is like a, a bystander in his own movie. He's like a spectator. <laughs> he didn't stop uh, the Riddler at all. He didn't. He really <laughs> like it's it's weird. Like. I don't know. Did, am I the only one who, who who observed this? Like, no, no. I mean, like, I think that's a really good point. Just because, because uh, I mean, I was always thinking that, like, oh, like, you know, he he was just a, he was always a step ahead of him at at that time. But then, but no, you're right. Like, he did turn himself in, and like, he did everything that he wanted to do. <laughs> I mean, except kill Bruce Wayne, apparently, which. Then he, then he so made I, it so seem I, like then it made it seem like he knew that Bruce was Batman, but the but then he kind of walked it back and like didn't really like it, it was it was very unclear whether he knew whether or not he knew definitively that Bruce was. I Batman. thought for sure he knew, but then but then when he was talking to Batman, like then he kind of walked it, it back a little bit. Yeah, he kind of didn't really address him as Bruce Wayne. It's no. almost like. Hey, yeah, like that's the one guy I didn't get. Like, yeah. can you go get him? I don't know. It's almost like asking him, "Can you go get him?" Type of deal. Like, hey, can you can you take care of this Wayne kid for me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, know, like, I uh, I mean, like, I guess with the exception of killing Bruce Wayne, you know, the Riddler pretty much got he did what he wanted to do. The thing about like the Riddler was like he was 
the same as Batman in this movie, except for he couldn't do it physically. Yeah. He couldn't, he didn't have the physicality like Batman. Also, he was just a cold blooded murderer. Like, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, he was definitely a cold blooded murderer. But I'm saying, but like, he was, you know, he was going after corrupt people in his, in his mind. Yeah. Batman goes after corrupt people in his mind. Like, one is a cold blooded murderer every time. Batman tries not to, but sometimes that's what happens. But like, which, which I, li- I like that they used his real name, Ed- Edward Nashton. Which, which in, in the comics they explained that that was his real name, and that Edward Nigma was like a sta- was like a, a pseudonym like that that he created. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, Ed- pretty cool. Edward Nashton was was his birth name. And oh, I that's think, cool. Like, Edward Nigma was like a pen name that they revealed in the comics that that's that's what it was. But so, like. And this one, it was like he went after. He was like the same as Batman, right? Mm-hmm. He's just a little bit more uh, cold blooded, cold blooded about it. But like he went after, you know, corrupt people, and that's why, like at the very end, it didn't make sense for him. Like to he, have these he was a fan people. of Batman. He was a fan of Batman. He was fanboying uh, <laughs> to Batman. He's like, hey man, we should work together. Yeah, he's like, look, I've got all this dirt on all these people. Like it was kind of charming people. in a way, like. <laughs> Uh, it was kind of endearing in, in, in a creepy way. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, dude, we should work together. We should team up. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So anyways, like, I, I thought that they did a perfect job with the Riddler as far as like wh- how he was staying a step ahead. You know, uh, again, the 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 very last scene of him bo- having bombs all over Gotham didn't make sense to what they built up about him, but uh. You know, I was, I was really, you know, this isn't some flamboyant Riddler. This is a, this is a guy that he's really smart, right? But he's just using his smarts to kind of be menacing and, uh, rather than being flamboyant about it. Which, um, I mean, for the most part, he was pretty, pretty even keeled throughout it. But like, I think towards the end, towards the end, that last scene, he kind of hammed it up a little bit. Paul Dano did. But yeah. I thought, I thought he was great as the Riddler. Yeah, like, yeah. I, He's yeah. he's got that look. He's like, you know, he looks like a, he's got that creepy serial killer look vibe about him. So, yeah. like, I thought that that was a great bit of casting. I thought he did a great job. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, <laughs> I just can't. I just I'm laughing at your whole Batman was a bystander in his own movie. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, it's kind of like the criticism you have of Raiders of the Lost Ark, where it's like. <laughs> Whether or not Indiana Jones is there, like the bad guys still kind of did what they wanted to do. Yeah, right. <laughs> he was just sort of along for the ride. Um, but yeah. So, uh, who else do we want to talk about? Uh, how about how about Zoe Kravitz as uh, as Catwoman as Selena Kyle? I think she looked looked the part of uh, Selena Kyle. Um, I thought she was know, great. I would say ninety. Eight percent of the uh, performance I loved, except for one stupid little line that made me question a lot of. Uh, we, we we'll get to that line in a bit. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, I think, but I do think I like. I I just like that the, this one was kind of like, I don't know. She was on her own. Um, you know, she's she's genuinely she wants to do good. I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you know, she was trying to help out somebody that needed help. That was in a bad situation, right? I, I feel like she had the most pl- – I think her Catwoman, I think, is the most plausible live-action Catwoman. I, I, yeah. It's probably my favorite live-action Catwoman to date. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I feel I, like I, – I, I'm not going to lie. I do like um, uh, what, the Nolan one. Anne um, Hathaway? I do like Anne Hathaway's um, she was a, Catwoman. She was okay. I, I do like I like I do like that one because she was always she was always torn like she was always torn on a, a little bit I I felt like her I I feel like the way they wrote her I felt like it was a little forced some of the, some of the flip flopping but in, mm. in, in this one I, I I felt like I felt like they did the best version of Catwoman there where it's like you know she didn't come from out of nowhere like it looks like you know you can believe that like she had some like actual fight training like yeah. you know yeah she's no a legitimate, she's a, daughter of of carmine falcone so maybe i I don't know if her family if her mom was that in the comics at all um it it was later like in the long in the the long halloween oh okay yeah i think they established that which they they took a lot of the long halloween um 
you know, parts of that of that and and put it in here. So that makes sense. Which is that was a great detective story in the comics. But um, mm-hmm. so yeah, like you you kind of buy that. Like okay, well you know she's she doesn't come from money like Bruce, but like she had like a single mom. She's kind of working her way, but like she was very driven. You can you can believe that she would like you know teach herself how to fight and and, and go down this path of wanting to of wanting to punish the bad guys. Yeah, she wasn't. A, a completely good person herself. She liked to steal, although they they didn't really they didn't really dive into like the theft stuff too much. But like even when she did, you know she 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 steals like with a purpose, not because she's I didn't, a bad person. So I didn't. So I didn't get. I think that would be the only thing was like they didn't. I feel like they always showed her as a good guy mm-hmm. in this one, right? Yeah. Like pretty much. When was the only time like? Uh, it felt like it was. Well, I mean, I, I think she, she did, did something bad. Yeah, I right? think she did break into like one of the one of the mansions to like steal some stuff out of a sti- out of a safe. But wasn't that to try and um, that was to try and help out that uh, that girl. Yeah, yeah, or I mean, whatever. She, yeah, I mean, there was a purpose to everything she did, but obviously she had skills as a as a thief and a cat burglar. No pun yeah, intended. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because you. you you say a lot of like these no pun intended things, so it always comes up at like like the best times, like like well, the I whole mean, bombing yeah, thing. That, You're that, like, that, oh, that doesn't hold any water. Uh, no, no pun intended. <laughs> well, I mean, hey, I, I don't plan it that way. It, it just comes out. Like it's that. great. It's great. No, um, but like, yeah, like I she didn't like call they, they herself Catwoman in this. Like she didn't wear like cat ears. Although like the the mask kind of looked kind of. The mask had weird. a little bit of yeah, a little bit of but, small ears. But yeah. I but I thought she was great. Like I thought yeah. Um, yeah, like you buy that, like she's trying to do the right thing and she's trying to help Batman out. And they, I mean, they have some differences of philosophy, di- differences of the way they approach things. But I like, think, I think I just, if I, if I really had to choose, a, I think I, I would, I kind of would want Cat, Catwoman to be a little bit more conflicted. Like, I feel like mm-hmm. she was pretty much like a good guy yeah. in this one. Um, that's just the way I felt. I, I, I kind of want that. I think that's why I like. Uh, well, yeah, there, there were there were like one there were like one or two lines in, in there where it's and, and you know we had uh, alluded to this earlier. The one thing where I she's know. like, eh, maybe I'll uh, maybe you and I can team up and rob some rob some uh, hedge fund billionaires. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I was just I and was just Batman wait. Didn't say anything. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> which which he wouldn't say anything because that would blow his cover. But like, you gotta wonder if he's thinking like, uh, I'm a billionaire, like. <laughs> I mean, like if Batman. I mean, was, he's not a hedge fund billionaire, but he is a billionaire. But like, you think like Batman would just be like, say something like, "You do that, I'm coming for you," or something yeah, to where like, if you do that, you're breaking the law, and like, I'm yeah, I'm not. like, like he didn't, he didn't or necessarily just, let her know that, like, oh, you shouldn't be doing that, you know? Yeah, like, like, like he should be like, hey, oh, um, you shouldn't steal stuff. That's bad. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Pretty much, like he shouldn't. It's almost like him being silent, like. I'm gonna noodle on that a little bit, and maybe I will, maybe I won't. I don't know. It's like, like yeah, like, Batman would not co-sign that. Like he's no, he's he not wouldn't. on board with that. No, he'd just be like, he's like, yeah, I can't, I can't get get with you on that. Like, exactly. don't steal stuff. That's yeah, not he good. should be. Yeah, he should no. be trying to convince her the other, like the other way around. Like he should be like, like, and he shouldn't be silent about that kind of thing and be like, maybe I don't know, maybe I'm, right. I'll think about it. <laughs> yeah. And also, and look, we, we had hinted at this earlier. Let's get into it. The line, the line that Selena Kyle delivered about, which I thought completely came out of left field, had nothing to do with anything in the movie. No, nope. no. Nope. But like she there was a line that she dropped in there about it's like, oh, well, about the these white privileged elites that we want to. Right. And I was like, uh, like, what? yeah, it was like, it was like, what the Weep. Like what Which, is that? Like you know, I was surprised, it, but it totally made my uh, made me roll my eyes in that movie. Yeah. Like right all then right, and there, right. now, I was like, I, "You just took me out of like the movie. What what right. happened here?" Like, well, let's let John let, let's put up a disclaimer about this first. All right, sure. This podcast is not meant to be any kind of political. We don't have an agenda about this. We're just a couple guys who like talking about movies. All right, that's yeah. that's. That's not what this is for. We're not here to give our political hot takes. Right. Unfortunately, that seems to be the way Hollywood has been going in recent years. Is yeah. that 
That is the trend. When it comes to certain stories, when it some, cur- comes to particular bits of casting, there seems to be this political agenda that is going on right now. And, and look, I, I do not care what Matt Reeves' personal political beliefs are. But, like, I do not go to see a Batman movie to have some sort of social commentary point of view, whether or not you agree with it or not. That's yeah. not what I go to these stories for. Right. And, like, I don't, like, I don't care that, you know, what Zoe Kravitz's, right. her ethnic background is. I right. thought she was a great cat woman. Right. And she would not be the first woman of color, which that, that God, that's such an obnoxious term, by the way. But, yeah. Like she, she would not be the first, you know, I mean, Eartha Kitt was the first black actress to play Catwoman back in the sixties. So and then you not, had, then you had, uh, well, Barry's. yeah, then you had Halle Berry's you know, yeah. version of Catwoman as well. But like, like that's nothing, oh, which was the probably the best Catwoman movie out there. Right. Right. I mean, I'm just the kidding. only fat <laughs> woman movie out there, really. Oh, all right, okay. How about best version? I'm just kidding. I, of course, <laughs> I am just kidding. <laughs> um, but no, uh, but like what I'm saying was, it's like you hear her deliver a line like that, and and have that be like a thing that they talk about in the press. Mm. I mean, I have to comment on that as a reviewer because that's yes. how I felt watching. You have movie. to. You have to. I can't not say anything about that because. Sure. They are the ones who wanted to make a big deal out of it. Yes. And, they purposely put that in there. And let's, if I could, if I could be honest for a second, you and I have talked about this many times when it comes to certain pieces of casting throughout these mm. movies. Yeah. When it comes to either race swapping or gender swapping or sexuality swapping, whatever it is. Sure. A lot of people argue, well, like, what if they thought that person was the best actor for for the role? Yeah, right. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have a problem with that argument, right. except I don't believe that that is the reason why that per, that particular actor may have been chosen. I feel like these casting decisions are made very deliberately. Yeah, and that that is how casting usually works in Hollywood, from what I understand, is that they are looking for a particular look. Yeah. And a particular appearance for a lot of these roles, especially when it comes to characters like this that come from comic books, which are a visual medium. Yeah. And especially if they're traditionally portrayed as such. Now, again, I have no problem with Zoe Kravitz's casting in the role. My problem is, is this question that goes in my mind, was she cast in the role because they wanted to put that line about white privilege in there. I, you can't help but to assume that it just, it just, it's almost like a connected dots type of deal for me. Right. And what bothered me even more was a recent interview that Zoe Kravitz did. Oh gosh. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. uh, According to this interview and I, and I may have it completely wrong, but she had claimed that she had auditioned for a role in the dark Knight rises back in 2012. We don't know what type, which role. We don't know specifically which role it was. Apparently, she did not get the the part that she was auditioning for. And, you know, because apparently someone... Now, she didn't say who it was. She didn't say the name it was. And she was very careful to say that she doesn't... That she didn't think it was Christopher Nolan who made that decision, that it was a casting director. But according to Zoe Kravitz, she claims that she did not get... Um, that she did not get the role that she was auditioning for because she was described as being, quote, too urban or because of her appearance or, or because of, her, you know, the fact that she's biracial. Now, I don't know if that's true. I, I'm not I'm not calling her a liar, but it does. But when I hear her deliver that line in the movie and then make that a big, you know, newsworthy item in, in a uh, in an interview. I think to myself, why would she say that? Right. Like, what? why would she bring that up in an interview? Like, what does that have to do with this movie? Right. And I, that, that <laughs> things like that in the press, and given that many, many actors and many people in Hollywood are so eager to express their political beliefs and let that bleed in, into so much when it comes to storytelling – to me, as a moviegoer, that that takes me out of it. Right. And, and look, it didn't ruin the movie for me. 
It didn't. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But things like that, I don't go to see a Batman movie or a DC or Marvel movie to ha- to be lectured to or to be or to go there for this like biting social commentary on such a hot button issue in mm. our country today. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so that my take- that, that I I know that bothered you. That that definitely bothered me. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I I definitely had a lot of very similar feelings where, you know, when I, she said that, it was so out of left field. Like, I literally was taken out of the movie right then and there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I, you know, I had to come back into it. I kind of had to make excuses up in my, my mind that, like, I thought, I was like, okay, maybe this is just the character that's just, like, really jaded with society. And that's just... Right. You know, maybe that's like, that's what she's been told and she's been jaded. And so that's how she thinks, not necessarily that it's right or whatever, or whatever else. And look, there there are, there are a lot of people who feel that way. Of course. But like, that's where I had to like, kind of like, I had to force myself to try and like, put myself back in the movie by thinking that way. Right. And then I think that line alone, though, it made me. Up until then, I was just completely like engulfed into the world of Gotham. Like, oh man, this city, you know, it's it's kind of so unique. I like the, like the filming. It's a it's a corrupt city. What's you know like that's just why Batman's in here and this and that. But then like so I was like completely into it. And then you say that line, I end up coming out of it, and then I'm start thinking, like I start questioning the movie, right? Just because yeah, what, of that what, line. What, like start, what? What are the motives here? Like, what yeah, are they trying exactly, to say? Exactly. Exactly. Is there an See, underlying? This is, this is what's know, the is there problem. Is there an ulterior motive like, here? That's the problem. Is like I shouldn't be taken out of the movie like that, right? I shouldn't be taken out of the movie where I'm like questioning what's going on in the movie if there's more than just entertainment in this movie, right? And, uh, and yeah. like I should just be inter- It should just be entertainment. It shouldn't be anything else. And now I'm thinking other things that's not entertainment in this movie so i'm just thinking whoa, whoa like now i have to start thinking what are they purposely setting up cops this way are they purposely setting up certain figures this way you know in a, in a time where everything's such a hot button where you've got blm you've got defund mm-hmm. the police and all that stuff so that that line alone made me like start questioning the movie because it's like you know all the bad guys are white cops in this movie. I'm just going to call it as it is. Again, I don't want to get too political. I'm just saying, like, this is where it takes me out of the movie, right? I started thinking, like, man, like, you know, like, they're just showing a bunch of white cops that, like, are bad people, you know? And and who yeah. are the good people? You got the black. You, know, you got a black Jim Gordon. And, like, I didn't care at this mm-hmm. point. Like, that yeah. really didn't matter to me. And, like, I... I was, I actually, well, I, I mean, there, really there's a YouTuber out there. There's a YouTuber out there called Ryan Kinnell who who get who observed that in, yeah. in his review, and he made a comment, and that that dude just got lit up on Twitter. Yeah. Jeez. Just raked over the coals for it. Well, and like, look, Ryan Kinnell's a very outspoken guy. He you know he sure. gives his political hot takes, and he has a okay. particular point of view. And you know, but well, like, I guess what I'm what I'm just saying is that like. I didn't what, care about He didn't any say of that. anything that wasn't true. Right. Like, I didn't care about any of that up until that point where it's mm-hmm. like it that's just because of that kind of thing it makes me it makes me think of like it just makes takes me out and I might start questioning everything and then I'm like I'm kind of putting pieces together that that I don't want to put pieces together too, you know? Exactly. Like I didn't want to want that, you know. Well, well, so, well speaking of that, yeah. I I do want to say I thought Jeffrey Wright was great as jim gordon love jeffrey wright man he, i don't i don't think that guy can do any wrong i feel like no he's a fantastic actor and it, he is yes it, yes he is a race swapped character he's the character. first black actor to play jim gordon which i think is awesome i think he plays the part he, he plays the part like which, again i don't have a problem with because like it wasn't brought up in the movie, yeah. like it, it, they didn't make an issue out of it. Right, right. He was just exactly. he's just a good actor playing the role, and yep. I was fine with it. And he no got problem. man, he got <laughs> he got beat up by Batman. <laughs> he took a pretty yeah, good punch yeah, to the face. <laughs> yeah. I did think that was a little weird that the cops kept Batman but didn't try to take his mask off. 
Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. that was a little goofy. Like, <laughs> that was a little goofy. Yeah. I mean, look, maybe they did off screen and we didn't see it, but like, mm, yeah. But like that, like, I, I don't know. <laughs> that seems like a weird thing. Like, you would think that would be the first thing that they would do if Batman was arrested uh, uh, or taken. Uh, yeah, a hundred percent. They're going for the mask. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I mean, maybe it's just because he is established in this one, you know, where he's not. But like, a they, mis- but, but like they don't respect him. They don't like him. Well, some do. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, obviously Gordon does. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are some who like him, but like for the most part, like they they don't care for him. Yeah, that's true. No, you're right. Right, you're right. I, I guess that's the only thing I can think of, though, is that, like, because he is established, where it's like, maybe they don't like him, but this is like, you know, you're still hesitant to actually know who's behind the mask type of deal, as opposed to, like, right. when he's starting off. I'm, I'm wondering, by the way, why we haven't seen a cinematic version of Harvey Bullock. You, you know who I'm talking oh, about? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The actual, the, the DA. Isn't he? A, isn't he a DA? No, no, not Har- not Harvey Dent. I meant uh, Harvey. No, Bullock. he's one no, of the no, cops. No, no, he's say again. Yeah, uh, Har- Harvey Bullock, one of the cops. He's like, yeah, he, you know, he's, he's another. He has he's like, like a. He's got like um. Yeah, I'm, thinking yeah, he, 90, I'm thinking of the 90s. I'm thinking of the 90s Batman. He's yeah, got he, two he, yeah, he, yeah, he's a bigger guy, kind of kind of a kind, yeah, kind yeah, of a yeah. street wise cop. It's like, hey, who is this? Yeah. Who let this freaky here on my crime scene? He's sort of an he's old a, school. He's dressed more of a detective. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, you're right. I'm not, talk, I, I'm not talking about Lieutenant Eckhart from the 89 movie. I'm talking about like Harvey Bullock. Yeah, right, you, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. He it could, totally makes you know, sense. Interesting right? sidebar. I'm wondering why we haven't seen him in movies. Yeah, but he would totally fit the part in this movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but besides that, uh, yeah, no, I thought I thought Gordon was great. Yeah, I thought Jeffrey Wright. Uh, Jeffrey Wright's just a great actor. You know, he is. He is a great actor. He's and, fantastic uh, in it. Uh, and, I, and I totally believe him as Gordon in this one. I liked you know? uh, I liked Andy Serkis as uh, as Alfred. Yeah, I just, I, Andy Serkis, he just didn't have a lot to do in this movie. Oh, so let's talk about that a little bit too. What he had to do in this movie, but uh, but Andy. Serkis also, has, I'm not I'm not a fan of how um, Bruce wasn't very nice to Alfred in this movie. I'm just gonna say it. I, I didn't care. For, I didn't like that. Yeah, I didn't like that at all. He, he at one point said, "You're not my dad." I'm like, oh my God. are you kidding me? Are you kidding me with this? Yeah. <laughs> are we playing Bruce as a petulant teenager? Like, come on, come on now. Oh yeah, yeah, no doubt. I think Andy Serkis, though, um, it is kind of a unique choice. Um, I don't know. It's because I, I, I just see him as like these other comic book uh, figures, where you know he's he's a uh, kill monk. What is it? He was Ulysses uh, Claw in, uh, Ulysses, in Black right, Panther. Thank you. I don't know why I said that. Ulysses Claw, and and then of course his voice is so unique and all that. So oh, I had a le- hard- the guy's a legend. I mean, yeah, he, no he's... doubt, no doubt. So I had a little bit of a harder time accepting that he's Alfred, but you know, you can, you kind of get past that. I will say he, you know, he plays the part the part perfectly. Yeah. Um, as far as the actual what happens with Alfred in this movie, I don't know about you, but completely did not believe at all that he, he was going to die. Um, yeah. When, when you know, the envelope Yeah, that, that would have been way too soon to kill Alfred. Yeah, when the envelope came, and, you know, I can hear a little bit of, like, like Casp in the uh, audience, because they're, because they, they, you know, Matt Reeves made it very a tense scene in that, you know, he had the, he had the music going on in there, and it well, was yeah, really I mean, tense, I mean, there's, like, there's, there's always that sense of like, oh my, they're not really going to do this, are they? I mean, because you never know with some, with some filmmakers, but like, I'm glad they didn't, obviously. Well, I guess you never know, but with ba- a Batman film, you have Alfred, and it's the first one. I just, I just didn't believe any of the of it. So I was yeah. like, okay, even if this thing blows up, well, this guy's not dying. He's going to be fine. Like, mm-hmm. he, like I literally said that to, uh, so I watched it with my friend Jake, and like. You know, it's going on. The thing blows up, and you can hear people kind of gas a little bit. And like, I just literally turn to Jake, and I'm like, "He's totally fine in this film. Like, there's, I'm sorry, there's, he's not dead. He's gonna be fine." <laughs> you know, it's like it's totally unbelievable. I don't know if it was necessary to have it. I don't know if it was necessary to to have that done to Alfred, in my opinion. Like, I, I mean, I, I, I mean, I guess it did it did make it a little more personal for Bruce. So I, I understand that. Uh, yeah. But I, yeah. I, I although I will say I, I I love the um the hospital scene where you know he and Bruce were were making up and he was you know it was a very emotional scene where he was telling him, he's yeah. like 
He's like, look, I did, I, I did the best I could. I wasn't prepared to be a parent. You needed a father and all you yeah. had was me, you know, but yeah, I, yeah. I tried my best and, and I love you. And, and just, it was a really nice moment. I thought to see yeah. them reconcile like that. Yeah. 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 I will say I, yeah. I'm paraphrasing what he said, of course, but that that's, I yeah. thought that was a really nice moment. Like he was like was a good tears touch. and everything. And, and <laughs> yeah. it was, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good touch for sure. For sure. Yeah. Again, it was, it was just a little bit shocking to see him as Alfred at first, but you got, you got past that. And yeah, you had good moments like that where in the hospital, like he, he's hurt and you know, like you're trying to kind of rekindle the relationship, trying to move on with the relationship in a better way. So mm -hmm. that was, I, that was a good, that was a good touching point. Um, what else we had in here? Um, I, I, I well, I, I thought it was interesting, and I, and I did want to comment on on this for a little bit. But uh, the the Russian roommate that um that Selena's Selena's Russian roommate, the the woman who was killed, and that was that was sort of oh, her okay. motivation as that. You know, like they were implying. I don't know. Were they trying to imply that she and Selena were lovers? Like like that they had. Like, they were more than just friends, you know what I mean? I didn't take it that way, but I guess I shouldn't be surprised if they tried to take it that way. I mean, I, I, I don't I, understand. I don't understand how they know each other. Well, apparently, they, apparently they they lived together. Is, is but like, why. how did they? How did that come about? Like, that's just a, like a convenient plot point. Well, I mean, I, I think I, I well, I think they were working together at the Iceberg Lounge. Okay. Because Selena was trying to get. Uh, to infiltrate that, I guess, because she wanted to, I guess, stop Falcone. Yeah, well, she had an agenda against Falcone. Yeah, I think she knew that he was her biological father, and he was trying she to did. get revenge. Because yeah, I, I, I guess maybe he didn't treat her mother that well, and and maybe maybe he had her mother killed. I I forget what exactly yeah. that th that deal was. Um, I I also didn't get why why. Falcone was the rat. I didn't really understand that whole side plot. Where he, he was like, where he was the one, like, I guess, ratting out these, these other corrupt officials. But like, who is he ratting to? Like that, I, it didn't really make a lot of sense to me. <laughs> was he yeah, telling the Riddler you know, about I, it? Like, I, I, I only watched it once like you. So yeah, I can't say that I know I can, I can put all the pieces together. I just thought, I just took it as like, Oh, this is this is the main bad guy that's taking taking all the money and he's got all the power. So I don't. So I so yeah. I did think his Falcone's death scene was actually pretty well done because like you got the you got the the sense that maybe maybe as he was dying he looked at Batman and maybe he put two and two together and thought like oh he's Bruce Wayne. You know what I mean? I guess I didn't. I don't know. I mean, I, I have to go back and see it again, but like you got. But it was an interesting like way they they shot it where like he was about to say something about Thomas Wayne but like he ended up dying so it's like you mean you like you mean, he, oh you he's get the sense Batman, that you mean you get the sense that Carmine knew something about Thomas that Bruce was trying to get out of him but he ended up dying before Bruce was able to figure out what what Falcone knew about about his dad right so I thought that was an interesting way to go about it where it's like it leaves Bruce a little, a little bit more, a little bit more unsettled and a little bit more torn that it's like, Oh, he's taking this knowledge with him to the grave. Like, yeah. You know, I thought that was actually a pretty clever bit of storytelling like that yeah. particular thing, but yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, I did. And, and I love all the riddles. In this one. The storytelling oh yeah. Telling of weaving, weaving the, the, the riddles and, and like, you know, uh, the whole URL, but it wasn't, it wasn't, yeah. you know, U R L rats, whatever. It's like, no, yeah. no, it's not L. It's it's the literal letter. Yeah, La Rata e. Alada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I the storytelling was well done uh, in that kind of plot. And I, I will say, like, Pattinson's Batman again, Batman, not Bruce Wayne, but Batman. I just he, I, I, his voice was good. Um, his demeanor was good. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, him being smart also was really good at the same time. Cause like, you know, he was under pressure with, with, yeah. with these riddles, you know, he had that guy that, that had a bomb, which, 
you know, they based a lot of these uh, events on real life, unfortunately. Um, so, so like the Zodiac Killer was was a big inspiration for the Riddler. No doubt about it. And, uh, you know, and I, I actually watched the documentary on on the guy that they had um, like a contraption just like that on his. On his uh, head, and, uh, and I don't and think they ever actually solved definitively who the Zodiac Killer was, did they? No, they. I, I, no, I think because according to Wicked, that's like still like an unsolved mystery. Like they never completely okay. caught him. You know what you're talking about? Yeah, you're talking about Zodiac. So there's a combination of things. There's a combination. This, these were a combination. So the Zodiac Killer didn't actually. I don't think the one I'm thinking of was not from the Zodiac. It's just. Mm-hmm. It was another uh, piece of crime that they know who it was. These two couples that that mm-hmm. they put this. Unfortunately, they had this, and he had letters. He had letters like that, like said, like I don't know what they said, but he had letters with them. Uh, I don't know if there were demands or whatever, but unfortunately, they couldn't save the guy, which was it was all right. on video. Like all of that was on video, like the whole thing, which was crazy. Like like color video, not black and white video, you know. So, but um. Anyways, um, I see that and I'm like, dang it, I'm se- I'm seeing of these like real life documentaries, but but so yeah, they, they made it kind of definitely more realistic. Like this stuff really happened because it does, it has mm-hmm. happened, you know. And uh, so they did a like a good job of storytelling in, in that way, where it's like, man, this is like this is kind of a crazy corrupt city. <laughs> you know? I mean, I, I I really didn't care for the the, the new mayor by the end of it. Are you talking about uh, the, uh, the the woman? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The girl who was the who was so the mayor. So that was uh, weird. That was Bella weird. Real. I, I mean, I think weird it just that, got like, on my nerves how like she was coming up to Bruce at the it was like, you know, Mister Wayne, you could be doing more for Gotham. Yeah. <laughs> so that just you know, I, I was waiting for him to say that like, she was I'm shot Batman. in the chest. Like, <laughs> she, was, she was shot in the chest. That. Yeah, like I, I, I mean. And then she at the know. end there, she's just getting up and walking with like no problem. I mean, I, I, honestly, her character was like scolding Bruce. She was like trying to guilt Bruce into into doing more charity work, and I just yeah, that's such an annoying thing for for someone to do. I, I in my opinion, yeah, so, yeah, like guilt, like well, you have money, you should be doing more. And blah, yeah. blah 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 blah. It's just, <laughs> uh, I, I I was rooting for that character to get killed in the movie. <laughs> I thought. You know, though, when you still at the end, you're still trying to figure out the whole the L U R L Ratara whatever that phrase is. I from like her name, I saw her name was like Bella Real. I was like, oh, she's got something to do. Look at the letters in her name, you know. And then I was like, no, no, no I was way off. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, her character actually wasn't really corrupt. There, well, there was like, there was no point with her character in that movie. Like, uh, is she going to be working with with Batman in the future? I I, I guess. I guess. Again, I, I I just it was so weird that she got shot in the chest and then she was, and then she was literally getting up and helping, just walking kids through the water like. Yes, perfectly. And it was <laughs> after the after after the funeral scene. I was I was rooting for that character to get taken out. <laughs> I was like, oh, you're annoying. Oh, which by the way, like with the bomb on his head or whatever i will say like that all that entire scene was fantastically done uh in the yeah, church the was, funeral uh, scene that was alex uh, that was peter sarsgaard oh yep yep who who, who played uh who played he, uh gil colson was the name of it. he was the yeah. he was the da yep yeah so that whole thing was played out really well the only uh con he's i have in that oh, scene was here's the, a little bit, bit of trivia uh, not the first DC role that he's played. He was in the Green Lantern movie in 2011. He was Get Hector out. Hammond. Get out. <laughs> he was Hector, and he's married to Maggie Gyllenhaal. What? Really? So there you go. In in real life. Wow. All right. So there you the go. Gyllen- go the, little... Gyllen- the Gyllenhaals just can't help themselves to be in. Uh... The Gyllenhaals and the Sars Guards. They were whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, but like, I think the only con in that was like. Batman was so was standing so close to that guy when that bomb yeah, went he off. Took, he took a bomb right to the face. Yeah, that, there's absolutely no way Batman would have. And was completely off. unscathed. Completely unscathed. And let's just. Say <laughs> well, no, was, oh no, 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 no. I, I take it back. He was knocked out. He was unconscious. It oh, did knock oh. him out. I think. Oh wow, that's that's a that's a mm, that's a real consequence there. 
I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, it's better than nothing, but like it's sure, sure. I mean, but yeah, like, he should have had some some burns on his face or something. His whole head would have blown up. Like his head would have blown up. Like without a doubt. Like I was gonna say that. Like let's just say his his protected his body. Well, his his helmet, whatever his his you know well, that, that armor is pretty strong, but <laughs> still, he he would have broken his neck or something. I don't know. His 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 brains would have like exploded like an explosion like that. You're, I'm sorry. There's like you're. Can, can, you're, can I you're say dying. one thing? I, I I liked the scene where he was in the flight suit. Yes, I did too. Because like you got the impression that he hadn't done that before. Yeah, it was that was kind of weird, right? <laughs> it's like he was figuring. It was like he was like figuring it out as he went. I thought that was kind of funny. It looked like he was a little bit scared of height at first, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. I like, mean, like. Uh, He's like, oh, I haven't done this before. All right. yeah. <laughs> I would have thought like, like, like when he went up to the edge there, like it, it's almost like, I mean, he was more shocked that there was an edge, but like, I would have thought like as Batman, you would be like, you don't care. You thought he would have prepared for that or like he had test, <laughs> like he would have tested it out before. Or he like, he's he Batman. always he's got prepared. some kind of like escape route as far as like, if, even if he's jumping over the edge. He's prepared to have like a grappling gun to save himself, you know. Like, right. yeah, it's it, it's an, you know, it, he's unusually ill planned in that. Scenario. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But although, I did like. That although fight. I did think it was funny how he was like doing that, and he's like wasn't sure how to land. It's like, oh crap, oh crap, <laughs> what do I do? I will say he how of... he got his suit that like flight suit. That was a cool. That was cool. That was a good. Mm-hmm. That was a good reveal. I was like, yeah. whoa, what's going on here? What's going on? Oh, nice. It was like a full, like, base jumping type of suit. It was a full squirrel suit, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know. Sure, I'll go with it. Was there, uh, what did you think about the, um, the, um, um, Batmobile? Loved it. Loved the car. Loved it. Yeah. I thought that, that was one of my favorite Batmobiles that I've seen in a long time. Is that looked- right? It looked like, okay, yeah, this is something that would exist. Like, he would, it looks like something that he would have, like, in the real world. Uh, it looked a little yeah. more realistic, I would say, than other Batmobiles we've seen. Yeah. I'm, it's just I like, was... I, I dug it. That, that, whole, that whole chase scene was fantastic. I loved it. I, would say, I think it's not my favorite Batmobile. Um, it fits this world, but... Uh, to me, it was just a regular car. <laughs> are you are you more of a tumbler guy? Um, I like I like to be honest with you. I think Ben Affleck's Batmobile, Snyder's Batmobile, yeah, he, is the best. I, I liked his Batmobile. That was good. That that Batmobile was amazing. Um, I'm not gonna lie. And uh, the tumbler, that's a real life thing, you know. Yeah, real life thing. Um, that was kind of like cool. That was definitely cool at the time. I, I would I would take the tumbler over this one. Uh, just because I just think it's just a regular vehicle, um, which which I find it really weird, uh, except for like it had a jet engine in the back or something like that. And um, I think it, that was it, the looked, only... it looked much it looked much stealthier than other Bat- Batmobiles. You know what I mean? Like it looked like it looked it looked like it might it was blend just like a in. Muscle car. It was just a muscle car. That's that's what I mean. It, it looked like it's something that would blend in a little easier than other oh, Batmobiles. Okay. As in, like, you know? oh, that's like a regular car. That's not a that's not a Batmobile type of right. thing. Okay. I mean, look, he's he he could afford several cars. You know, <laughs> he might have more. We don't know. That's true. That's true. But I think like there was nothing. I like unique the Bat cycle it. too. There was nothing. What what ha- besides what a jet engine at the end would give him a little bit a nause. You know, we'll give, mm-hmm. what what uh, what did that vehicle do? Like, I I don't know. It just it just looked cool. It looked menacing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. It didn't it didn't have a lot of gadgets though. I guess that's, that's it. Didn't have anything. It didn't have anything no. except for a little bit of nause. That's about no. it. You know, like. <laughs> but like, well, so well, he, I guess that's why it's, it's like, like he was hanging out with Dominic Toretto. He's like, I need that's a ten-second car. That's where I thought of. I thought it was like uh, this. This belongs in Fast and Furious. The like, car don't make the driver. The driver makes the car. <laughs> when, hey, it's all about family here. You know, it's all about family. <laughs> all about family. So I mean, like, it wasn't really anything special for me. Um, that Batmobile. Um, so I, I, I guess, I mean, like, I mean, I dug the car chase. I just mm-hmm. didn't. Big, like 
There was nothing going on for me for it. It looked cool. I like muscle cars, but that's all it was to me. It was like another muscle car. You know, Dominic Toretto literally was driving that car. Right. <laughs> like that's the way, you know, it wasn't Dom Batman. Bryant. It wasn't Batman <laughs> behind the wheel there, but um. Oh, oh crap! It's Dom and Brian. They're after us. <laughs> I was. The music was good. The effects were great. Uh, I loved. Um, I loved Colin Farrell in that scene. He's like, "I got you, I got you," you know. And uh, I, I, I did yeah, like that I, whole thing. Shout out to Michael sure. Giacchino who did who did the score yeah, for this one. For that sure, was, the music for sure. was great. The I music was great. Yeah, the music was really good. Uh, he, I like. He's great. He's he's done so many things over the years. Like he's. He's become like one of the go-to guys in Hollywood for like, yeah. like he's done yeah. a lot of the Marvel movies. Uh, he did Rogue One, Star Wars. So he, yep. yeah, he he did the Star Trek movies, the J.J. Abrams ones. So yep, yep, yeah, he's great. They 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 did they had they did a lot of things they things right. He did right? the Incredibles the composer, for Disney. Yeah. Uh, the 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 photographer also was from mm-hmm. Rogue One and some something else. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, so he was like the 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 DP, the director of photography. Yeah. yeah, okay. So they they did a lot of things right in this one as far as like making it look look good, you know, for sure, and and sound good, of course. Yeah, but but yeah, no, I did. I mean, I still dug it. I, don't get me wrong. I, it's not like I'm look at I'm I'm hating the scene or anything. I'm just saying that Batmobile didn't do much other than like, oh, he's got a muscle car. He's using a muscle car to. To go and to catch this guy, which and and it looked cool. It looked cool. It looked good. Yeah. So hope I'm hoping in the next one or whatever, like he's got like a legit Batmobile, you know. But sure. Yeah. I, may, maybe it's because like I think they had didn't they have like scenes of like kind of uh, hinting at the Batmobile and the uh, before that came up. They had like, scenes, like he was like working on the engine and all this stuff, and I was it, like, it almost it almost reminded me a little bit of like the Adam West Batmobile. <laughs> a little, little bit. bit yeah yeah a little bit yeah yeah <laughs> just sort of basic design you know yeah 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 definitely definitely so but um yeah but, uh, no it was uh there was so there was no plane or any kind of flight uh no. vehicle or whatever so i'm sure that'll be that'll be something to look we forward can, to we can see that in the future we don't know yeah well you didn't get um, it right in the nolan you didn't get it until the third movie that's think. right that's right you know so so but, so yeah, man. So on the whole, like I, I thought it was a decent movie. I uh, like I wasn't, yeah. I didn't hate it. Um, I didn't really love it. Yeah. It was it, it was a solid Batman movie. Like it, yeah, it, it was cool. Yeah, you know, yeah, it wasn't it was perfect. Enjoyable. You know, it, it's again, it's kind of that argument. Well, like, is this really a necessary reboot? Reboot, but they're doing it anyway, and so right. You know, it, and it was funny because. I was thinking to myself when I was watching this, and you may or may may not agree with this, but I was thinking, I'm like, hmm. Well, despite the 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 actor changes, the, the the change in the cast, and like the particular time frame, like they said it was like in 2001 when the, the Waynes got shot. I think they did say specifically that it, that it took place in the present day. I'm like, huh. Mm. You know, except for a few minor changes, like this could have easily been like a prequel like telling the early days of Ben's Batman. Yeah. Like there's nothing in this that really contradicted anything that happened in the DCEU. You know what I mean? I, I don't know that that's, that's what I took away from it. No, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking. I, mean, I, know, statement for, look, there, I know, yeah. for a fa- I know for a fact that that's not what they're going for. I of know course, for a fact yeah. that it's different, but it's like in my head, I thought like, Hmm, you know, if, with just a few tweaks here and there, this could have easily been yeah. like a prequel, like talk, talking about the early days of the DCEU. Back yeah, then. I will say I don't I don't, I can't like the only plot point. Yes, plot point. I can mm-hmm. totally see that. Uh, I just can't see physically. I, I don't see how um, I don't see how Robert Pattinson becomes Ben Affleck. <laughs> no, well, uh, no, of course not. Well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Take, but, taking away the casting changes and sure, sure, obvi- sure. Yeah, obviously yeah, yeah, Jeffrey yeah. Wright can't turn into J.K. Point, Simmons. Yeah, plot point. I would say I can, I can, I can see that. Um, you know, I, obviously I'm just now thinking about it, but there's nothing that comes to mind that like that would contradict it. So yeah, I can see that. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I don't know. That that was just a takeaway I, ha- I had from it. But look, overall, I mean, if you're listening to this, obviously you're a Batman fan. Otherwise. We we went a lot longer than I thought we were going to. We were just kind of, yeah. but I, I'm glad we did this. I'm glad we I, I you think, know, had. I had, think it was definitely a very enjoyable movie. 
overall. Um, it's definitely not a, it definitely has its flaws. There's more flaws than I thought it had, but like, yeah. I think it was an, an enjoyable movie, uh, great score. And, um, and, uh, would I, would I watch it again? Yeah, I would, I would definitely watch this movie again. I, I would um, like to, I would like to watch think? again. Is it something that I'm going to buy? I, I, I don't know. Yeah. What I, I, I don't know yet. Here's something. It, what did you think about that? In the entire movie, there was literally like one motorcycle on the streets and it was always Batman. And then like, and then it was Catwoman. That was like, there was, I, I took note of it. I was like, there's always vehicles on the streets, but never any motorcycles except for the two mythical figures. You know, I, I didn't even think about that at all. I, thought about it every time I, I didn't notice it I mean yeah I'm, I'm not saying you're wrong but like yeah that I I that didn't come to mind at all so, but so like because like I did think always... there were a lot of weird shots of them riding side by side together yeah. I thought that was interesting yeah that was interesting I mean it was kind of cool but it was like yeah, yeah that's di- didn't think they'd put that in there that that's kind of all right that's cool. I just thought like I remember like because you know they're they're usually when they're on a motorcycle they're usually following somebody right Right. Um, and, uh, it just always made, at first I was like, oh, it's only a Batman on a motorcycle, you know? And then. I, I, I was just thinking now, like some of those shots where they're riding together and it's like the daytime, I'm like, you could easily recut that and make it look like a romantic comedy. <laughs> like they're, they're you just, they're totally. just having a night, nice, like they're having a nice ride together. It's like, it's like, you it's like a date movie, you know? The, uh, the Lion <laughs> King, you could do the Lion King Phil Collins song, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That was, that was Elton John, you mean? Can, can you feel the dang love it. tonight? Uh, yeah, yeah, just say, uh, dang it. Yeah, it was uh, Elton John. Yeah, can you feel, I, I can picture it. Can you feel the love tonight? Can you feel the love tonight? <laughs> oh, that's what I picture. But, uh, but yeah, no, it's like, it's like, it's only Batman that's in it. And then all of a sudden Catwoman is on a motorcycle. And it's like, and she doesn't notice that like there's all of a sudden there's one other motorcycle that's following her. Like the only motorcycle. In the entire Gotham City, you know. I didn't think about that at all, but th- that's kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. If you ever watch it, I, I, I did think it weird how o- it was weird how often it was raining in this town. Oh yeah, for sure. For like sure. every other scene, it was it was it was raining outside. I'm like, where where is Gotham City? Seattle? <laughs> like, what's going on here? Yeah, yeah, you know, you make a good point. It could be Seattle, Spe- right? No. Speaking of which, I, I I did like hearing Nirvana something in the way. Okay, I didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah, you heard that song, Something in the Way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now that I'm you're singing like, it, yeah. I hadn't, I hadn't thought about that song in years, but I'm like, yeah, man, that was, that was a cool, that was a cool song choice for this. Yeah. And yeah. apparently Pattinson based his, I mean, he said he based his Bruce Wayne off of Kurt Cobain. So, oh, make it, make of that whatever you will. Oh, all right. Okay, sure. You know, and I tell, I, I, I said this before when we, you and I were talking, but like, you know, I watched Robert Pat- Pattinson do an interview about like this take on Batman. And he's like, yeah, you know how usually his parents die and he's sad and, and mad and angry, but he comes out of it to save Gotham. It's like in this one, he never comes out of that stage. Oh no. And I'm like, now that I've seen him, like, yeah, no, he's definitely always in that stage. <laughs> I mean, I, I- I'm, I don't hate it. Like that's that's pretty on brand for Batman. Like you know he, except like, for he, Bruce Wayne. That Bruce Wayne. That's not you know. Well yeah, no, well, I mean well not on the outside but inside. Like that's very yes. much a part of who he is. That is definitely Batman for sure. Yeah, yeah I agree. So, I agree. So yeah, so uh, so that that was that was what we thought about about the Batman. Yeah. Um, it'll be it'll be curious to see where they go with sequels for this. Because I, I I think that's depending on where they go with uh, with future installations of the, of this iteration, I think that's going to determine in the future. I, I I feel like that that'll be that'll determine how this movie is is viewed. I think years from now. Yeah, yeah. Because I think a lot of people didn't like Batman Begins as much, but once they saw so let the me, Dark Knight, let me ask this then: uh, Do you want to see? a sequel for this movie. Um, like, do you want that to happen? Or would you, would you want them to focus on something else? 
You know, well, I mean, well, for one thing, I think it's going to happen whether I want it to or not. But um, let's check check the numbers for a second. Um, so far, the bo- the box office is at forty four hundred sixty three point two million. I don't know if that's worldwide or domestically, but I was like, going to say this this, yeah. this thing made money. Like they 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 made a lot of money on it, which is no surprise. Wait. I mean, it, 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 it's kind of hard not to make money on a Batman movie, you know, like people are going to go see it. Hold on, I'm trying to think. You said 400. According to Wikipedia, it's, it says it's four, 463.2 million. I don't know if that's the global take or just domestic, but like. Well, if that's domestic, that's that's impressive. But global. Like you want to be pushing. You are going to be especially a Batman movie. You, I mean. Think about the Superman movie with um, with Henry Cavill made like close to seven hundred million or something. Like that. It was like six hundred and something million worldwide. Right. Um, okay, I, I'm I'm looking at it. it's um like it broke even. I mean, it definitely broke even in the states. It was two hundred thirty eight point five million in the U S. and Canada, and right. twenty twenty two hundred twenty two point seven in other territories. Okay. So that that's the total worldwide box office uh, gross and, and so say, far. This is post pandemic, so and it's still in the theaters now as as we're recording this. So that's not going to be the final take of it. Obviously. No, it's not. No, it's not. But it's um, going to be less and less each weekend. Yeah, you think there's going to be a drop off? Yeah, there's I mean, always. Well, I mean, the yeah, there's is. always a drop off. So there's a giant drop off uh, after every weekend. Yeah. So. Plus, I plus I think. You know, reviews are coming in. They're a little more polarized. Yeah. Then. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I'll be curious then, because if it's only at 400 something worldwide now, I will say it's post pandemic. So you have to adjust the numbers a little bit. Um, but like, I'm going to have to look at the budget because the budget seems like a really high budget. And and when we say budget, that's like the minimal amount. There's actually more costs that goes to the budget. Um, yeah, which, I mean, which is funny, because it's like, if you're trying to tell, like, a grounded detective story, it's like, do you really need to spend as much money? Or, or I mean, I, and I guess with the marketing and all that, but, like... Yeah, yeah. It's like, I feel like you could probably make a movie like that for, for less. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. So I'd be curious on that. So, I, I, so I, I don't know. But getting back to to answer your original original question do i do i want to see a sequel to this right i would say yes yeah, yeah. I, i'm genuinely curious i want to see what they do with it where they go mm-hmm. with it yeah i want i want to give it a shot yeah i i will say i do want to see a sequel out of this um, i think there's a lot of potential that they that they could do with this a lot of a lot of stuff you yeah. know whether or not you know this leads to like a new dc movie universe i i doubt it I mean, you never know, but I don't think they. Are. I I think they're doing standalones for. I think they're doing two separate things. Um, yeah, probably, yeah. I because you know they've got the DCEU storylines. Like we said before, we you got Shazam and you know uh, Aquaman. Aquaman too, you know, and all that stuff. So Flash they're still continuing. And, yeah, they're, they're probably going to do another that. Wonder Woman movie. You know. Oh, a hundred percent. I would. They need to redeem that character. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. But um, but like, so they're doing they're doing two different things, you know. Let's they're basically like, can we make money doing two different things? The answer is yes, they can. Um, you know, we can make Joker, we can make the Batman, and then we can do DCEU stuff. So they're yeah. definitely doing two separate things. And and so, do I want them to do I want them to make a sequel to this one? Focus some efforts. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing another you know iteration, not iteration, uh, seeing more of the story where it unfolds. I hope, you know, I want to see the growth of Batman slash Bruce Wayne because, mm-hmm. um, yeah. you know, I feel like there's a lot that needs to be growing. <laughs> that should, I, I agree. I, there, I feel like know, there's so. a lot of there's a lot of potential with where yeah, they're yeah. Left, with where they're left off at this one. Yeah, I will say that, like, I mean, I, you know, it, it seemed like the underlying message of this movie is that Batman doesn't need to be all about vengeance, that he can inspire hope. And I'm like. He can be a yes. Superman. <laughs> That's really what it is. Right. Which I, I I mean, yes and no. I mean I, I think I mean I think ideally he he does both. There are elements of both in there. Yeah. I mean that that those are kind of 
like the vengeance thing, that's like a core like characteristic of, of Batman. That's it like is. that's sort of like a defining thing about Batman that he yeah. that you know he he's there to he's there to stop criminals. He's he's very active. Like right. Superman is more of a like a firefighter. Like he shows up if the, if they're if people need to be saved. Yeah. Batman is more of like a cop where like he is actively going after crime. Right. Right. Um I, I don't necessarily have a I don't have a problem with him inspiring hope to like people who aren't criminals. I yeah, I, yeah. I think that I think like I don't have a problem with that. I'm Yeah, yeah. I, I remember seeing um like there was an animated movie called Justice League the New Frontier. Have you seen that? That there was a scene there was a scene in which like Batman changed his costume to be a little bit less scary because I, I think he was on a case one time and he was saving some people from a burning building and like there was a kid who was like afraid of him. Oh, and I interesting. and I think there was a line that in that movie where he's like, he's like, look, I, I did this because I wanted to scare criminals. I don't want to scare children. Which I thought is interesting. Like, okay, okay. okay. I could see that. I mean, yeah. it's 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 kind of hard not to be a little a, a little scary, you know, by accident. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But right, right, right. You know, I I mean, that's I yeah. I, I I buy that. You know. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, so I mean, but like you, like I said before, man. Yeah, I, I want you know, I'm all for the more of these movies being made as long as they're good. Right. If, if it's a good movie, if there's a good story to tell, if if I like it, then yeah, I I want to give it a shot to 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 do what it, what it's uh, what it's trying to do. And, and you know, judge it judge it accordingly. You know, right. I, I, look, we, you know, you and I, we don't go into these movies like wanting to hate it. We want, we want to be entertained. We want to have a good time at it. And, yeah. and I want to give this particular uh, version of Batman a, a chance to, uh, right. To be as good as it possibly can be, or at least be the best that, that it can be. So absolutely. And we love that yeah. character. You know, we love we do. character and characters. You know, we love the world. That, that yeah. We love, space, so. we love Batman. We love the DC universe. We love the Marvel universe too. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that's what this is all about, man. Thank, um, yeah, man, we we went a lot longer than I thought we would, but you know we're having a good time, and we hope that anyone listening to this is having a good time too. Yeah. Uh, thank you as always, John, for joining me with these. I, uh, Dude, pleasure was all mine, man. I appreciate yeah, you man, having I, me on I, for sure. Absolutely. I know you and I have talked about doing like a deep dive into Man of Steel, which is really the the movie that you and I sort of first bonded over really when we were working together when yeah. when like when you and i first really met we we kind of met like oh this guy likes man of steel oh so do i and that, that and we became friends outside of work because right. of it, stuff like that right so Definitely. um so yeah so i mean that that might be the next thing that that you and i do when uh when we get time we're both very busy guys obviously but yeah I appreciate you guys listening to us. Uh, John, do you have anything, uh, anything in the works? I know you, you had talked about maybe doing like a YouTube channel for like some, some fishing and stuff like yeah, that, that, I, that, that you're I really into. That, I do have that YouTube channel up, but I only have one video up and, uh, and it was like made like two years ago or something like that now. So, but, but, um, it's called a fishing journey and, uh, and basically, you know, going on, fishing adventures and uh doing a bunch of catch and cook series where you know you get to see what what the ocean around us and uh what we can catch and seeing uh, some good eats out of it so. well i'll tell you what if, if they ever do a, a cinematic adaptation of batman's the laughing fish story <laughs> right. then i specifically want your input on that one you know right. you know what story i'm talking about i have no clue what you're talking about but uh you know what i it was a story where like the Joker poisoned a bunch of fish and they all had like smile and he would like what that was his dream. big like wasn't it that was his in... big scheme to like sell that and make a bunch of money with it. It was incredibly goofy. But I wasn't that actually in the animated series? It was. They yeah, they, okay. anim- yeah, they yeah. adapted that for the animated series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Completely what I'm ridiculous. When but you said that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but so, yeah, yeah. Man. So, appreciate and, it. And obviously yeah. you, you had dabbled in directing and filmmaking and stuff as well. So a little bit. Yeah. And in fact, that was my first major in college um, was was filmmaking. So, but you yeah, know, one yeah, of these days you and I will have to like work on some sort of script together and some sort of like film project. That'd be awesome. Sure. That'd be so much fun. 
Definitely. But anyways, man, thank you. Thank you for joining me as always. And thank you guys for, uh, for listening as always. You can always follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Jack X Connor. Uh, like me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Jack Connor music. Uh, you can check out my band Vertebraker, uh, uh, facebook.com slash Vertebraker band. And uh, I'll be, I'll be listing all our various links here, here in the description. Thank you as always for tuning in and please in the comments, let us know, not only what you thought of the Batman, but if you have any particular requests for us, because we had talked about doing, you know, looking into various, uh, you know, various comic book and sci-fi movies over the years. And, you know, whether or not you love them or hate them, whether, you know, whether they're more recent or they're or, or older stuff, we had talked about doing stuff like that. But, you know, if anyone out there has any sort of, um, any sort of request for something like us to do, like maybe, I don't know, like maybe Superman, the movie from 1978, or maybe um, Batman Returns, or Batman Forever, or Batman and Robin, even like you know, it, do- it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, whether you loved it, hated it, uh, if you want us to talk about it, let us know because that could, that could be a lot of fun for us. So uh, cool. Any, anything else you want to want to share before we uh, before we close it up here, John? Uh, I uh, nope. My I am my. Uh, AirPod, Air, AirPods are on zero percent, so I'm gonna have to close it up. All right, well, this is the perfect time. I know it's getting late uh, for us, but anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. As always, for John Walters, I'm Jack Connor. This has been the Phoenix Report, and uh, thank you very much. And we are vengeance.